Hey, it's Ross Bade with Role Playing Public Radio. This is RPPR Actual Play. We are playing Imperium Maledictum, the brand newest. Oh, that's definitely the way to say it. A Warhammer 40,000 role playing game from Cubicle 7. Uh, it is a Warhammer 40,000, is of course a world of grim dark. There is only war, but we're not even. War is not even the main point of this particular campaign. It is called the Indius Mandate, uh, Indius Mandate, and we have a team of agents working for a patron uh, because that's the premise of the game, and so we'll find out uh, about them. So we begin this campaign on the world of Daud Teras, uh, which is a world that is important to the Adeptus Administratum. And it is a world where many archives and data vaults are kept. Um, and so we have four agents and they forced. Well, we'll find out if they know each other or if they're strangers. Uh, four figures walk towards the same data vault, showing a the armed guards there a, a signed letter um, allowing them inside. And so as each one enters, they take an elevator, leading them to a secure conference room. And so let's first focus on each of these agents. So, and so when I introduce you, please mention anything you want to plug very quickly and then talk about, tell us about your character. So Noah. So hi, I'm Noah. You can find me at thinking too hard about anime where I do a podcast with my co-host Aaron J. Shelton, where we, uh, it's a little bit of history, a little bit of analysis, a lot of overthinking the Japanese creators we love so much. We're currently doing a season all about Evangelion, all of Evangelion, the series, the movies, everything. Uh, and I am playing Guardsman Kurt Nexilp. I am a a scout. And I am I am loaded for bear because they gave me a lot of weapons when I <laughs> built this character. So unless they are taken from me when I when I enter, I am carrying like a long Laz, a Laz carbine. Uh, an auto pistol with a massive silencer. I am, yeah, I am. I am the sneaky sniper guy in the crew. So you are in the capital city of Dal Ateras, which is a a world that, yeah. How long have you been on this planet? Do you know much about it? This is it is dreary. It is a, a heavily built up city, noted for the many many building sized data vaults. So just mm. imagine an endless. Like block after block of just drab ferrocrete brutalist style buildings with massive heat pumps and water running into them and pouring out to keep these data vaults cool and operating with walkways underneath them. So yeah, that's sort of the visual look that we're going for. Think like you know, very foggy because of all the heat pump being working, everything else overcast, very dreary and bleak. Yeah. Yeah, I would say I've not been on planet for very long, maybe like a week now. And most of that has probably been traveling to this location from wherever they dropped me off at. Okay. And do you know how long now out of character? I don't know if you if character creation covers how long you've been working for the patron or how you started working for the patron. Or is that something we just determined through role play? I didn't see anything. About okay. Yeah, All right, so I'll leave it up to you. Uh, do you if you want if you want to say if you know if you have an idea of like how long you've been working for your current patron, you can. Otherwise, you could just say this is your first assignment. Uh, I think yeah. this is going to be my first assignment. Okay, yeah. So where did your character hail from? Oh, jeez. What kind of world was it? You don't have to give. Uh, it name. was so he came from a feudal world. Okay, so he lived on a fairly. Not quite as, you know, as terrible as like a hive or a, a death world mm-hmm. or something like that. But it was still pretty rough growing up until the tithe ships came and off to the guards he went uh, mm-hmm. to join the Astra Militarum where he found himself very adept at being unseen and, you know, a, a silent killer for as good of a silent killer as a, a schlub like myself can be. Yeah. So, yeah, you basically were assigned to a regiment and then some paperwork showed up saying you've been reassigned and Mm -hmm. you've been given a lot of extra weapons that you normally wouldn't be carrying. And they told you to go meet it. So so you go in. Next up, we have Thad. Yes. Hello, it's Thad. I can be found on the Internet sometimes. Don't do that, though. Nobody wants to be found there. 
I am playing the Harrow. That is my character's name. They are Voidborn, so a creature of, of the, you know, locked away in a dark space city that, you know, not a great place to grow up. But now I'm a sanctioned psyker. Don't question all the things that I did before that sanctioning. Those don't matter because the dark places are, are gone from me now and I am filled only with the light of justice. And that is why I am here. Yes. Have you been working long for your current patron in the uh, administratum? Oh, I have no idea. Okay. Uh, places, people, these things flow together. I uh, <laughs> All I know is that I am to do what this person says. That is what I have been called to do. And you just, so I shall. You just live in the present. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. The past uh, is full of darkness that need not be pierced any further. Okay. And one thing that is, is noted is when you go into the conference room you were told to sit in one specific area and that there would be a person that will have to there's a chair opposite you and there is some sort of device in radiating energy that you're not very familiar with uh, between the two seats so yeah and next up we have v hi guys i'm v you've probably heard my voice here a couple times now and i'm really happy to be back if you like my voice and you want to hear more of it you can check me out on the number two award winner for the audio fiction world cup the all night society which was also happens to be the number one actual play podcast uh, if you like vampire the masquerade whatever it's kind of cool I guess we're kind of neat. Uh, but everything else I do, you can find me over at Queen's Court Games. So at Queen's Court RPG on Twitter, at Queen's Court Games everywhere else. Or if for some reason you want to hear any of my silly ramblings, you can find me on the internet at V is for Vampire because my name is V and I like vampires. Mm -hmm. uh, today uh, I'm playing Rabbit, who is a Voidborn as well, but does not likely know her the Harrow. Excuse me, the Harrow. Have to remember the the. She's a she's an analyst for the Astra Militarum. Yeah. And so you were reassigned, obviously, to your current patron. Have you been is this your, also your first mission? It is. It is. <laughs> uh, but you know what? I, I aim to please. I am. I am a little bit of a teacher's pet. So, you know, I am. I, I, I aim to please. So I'm yes, it, it's my first, but it won't be my last. I promise. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, and. You you go up, and finally, we have Kara. Hello, I'm Kara. You may have heard me over at, well, no, I forgot what Caleb's. Don't Dead, Dead Dead Channels. Dead, yes. Dead Channels. You may have heard me over at Dead Channels, playing a few times with Caleb in the mysterious and terrible world of Delta Green. You can also hear me, along with Thaddeus, eye contact, angry, at the Fundamentals with our great friend Jeremiah, who you may have heard, who you should have heard of, even though you have definitely heard of Thaddeus, given that they spoke a moment earlier. But you will not find me on Twitter because I am perma banned forever and ever. Amen. And apparently, I am worse than Alex Jones. That's uh, kind of a badge of honor, actually. <laughs> I, I am pretty proud of it. I regret nothing that I have ever said or any of the politicians I've ever made extremely cruel comments to. So I'm happy with myself. <laughs> Excellent. And yeah, tell us, what does Lim look like? Uh, what would others see? Lim is a very small, very small, but very sturdily built person. In fact, if you imagined Tanya Harding, probably exactly that size and build. Maybe I used that as a reference. Who knows? Um, but a very uh. small, solidly built woman with very large liquid eyes who has just a buzz cut, just short, almost shaved hair. And nothing else particularly visually interesting about her. Okay. But there is something a little off-putting. Yeah, I, I would say for you, Lim, you were found on a hive world. And some, yeah, uh, some interesting, you were, you were actually treated very politely by certain people. And told to, you sort of get the impression you were hidden away. That someone wanted you for uh, that that some organization didn't want you to be discovered by another organization. There, there's a lot of moving around at night. Don't talk to these people. Come with us. Go over here. Stay here. Very very cloak and dagger kind of things. And it kind of wound up getting on a ship and finally making it to this planet and being told where to go and what to do and not to talk to anyone. Um, and so you find yourself here. When you take the elevator up to the conference room, there is a young woman in a clerical 
a scribe's outfit who tells you yeah, that you need to sit in this corner and don't step away from this chair. There is an energy field, a little device blocking you off, kind of like, you know how in trials, they'll, they'll some in, in some countries, they'll put the defendant in a little glass box. You're in that, like, but except there's like a little energy field around you instead of glass. So, so there's the three of you who are sitting at, uh, well, let's hear the Harrow sitting in the corner opposite the glass box, the energy field box. And the other two of you are sitting at this long table, clearly meant for like 30 people. And you're just there alone for a little bit. As the scribe has told you to wait for the person to give you your briefing. And yeah, does anybody say anything? Lim has spent most of her life kind of being dragged around like a like a very expensive and somewhat dangerous sack of potatoes. And so the idea of being told to sit here and be silent, sit here, don't talk, stare into the middle distance is something that she is very comfortable with. And is in fact sitting there and staring into the middle distance at, through, whoever is misfortunate enough to sit across from her. Okay. So the hero, you do get a distinct odd feeling like the... The pressure in the air has changed as soon as Lim has entered the room. But uh, yeah, you feel tense for some reason, but you can't quite place it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, do you do you say anything, Harrow? The Harrow? Sorry, who? Thanks. <laughs> I'm, you, yeah, this is good. I'm good doing good. this to you. <laughs> yeah, no, you are. No, no, just sitting quietly, observing, looming somehow while sitting down, you know, things okay. of this nature. What about you, Rabbit? Are you saying anything as you wait? No, but I'm definitely not just sitting there with my hands crossed in front of me. I'm I'm pulling out anything that I need, some extra parchment, and then also my auto quill because whatever is you know is going to be said, I, I want to make sure that I have it down. So I, I am laying out all of my stuff and organizing it very, very neatly, lining everything up edge to edge, corner to corner, just making my space very, very neat and organized. Okay, and Kurt, are you saying anything as as you wait? I'm just observing the other three. I guess Rabbit, since you're you're Militarum, you would have some sort of like markings, like uniform, something like that. So like, you know, I just kind of like you know, clock that and then the two weirdos on either side of me. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you were all given civilian clothing. The 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 Militarum people were told to change out, although like didn't get rid of everything or maybe you didn't mm-hmm. pay attention so like yeah but you're not wearing your 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 uniforms um your no gear. but I, I i have that nice like very structured cropped look of a militarum like you mm-hmm. would just know right like there, there there's a vibe and like oh, yeah I, I've, I've passed the vibe check well also your 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 equipment is still like militarum issued right yes. like your, your auto quill and other things have the little insignia and everything the aquila and all that so after yeah picking at her sleeves like like, you know when someone is wearing something they're not comfortable with like when Mm -hmm. someone wears a suit they'll pick at it oh yeah her very normal sort of everyday clothing she's picking at it at at the sleeves of it as though she is unsure of what she is wearing okay yeah it's new they're definitely new clothing so i'm not sure she's ever worn new clothing before well no they definitely gave you new clothing for this like clothing that would blend in on this planet so they definitely had you change. So yeah, it's very, yeah, it's probably very uncomfortable. So after what seems like an eternity, but it's more like five minutes, the the door at the far end of the room slides open and a very nondescript man comes in. He's very wearing just the drab administratum uniform. Uh, those of you who know anything about the administratum might so, recognize subtle indications that he's a high-ranking administra adept, but if you don't have those kind of scholarly skills, you you know just just a just another bureaucrat, one of countless millions. But he uh, sits at the end of the table. He has his own data slate. He looks at Rabbit and he says, "No, no notes for this meeting." So this is this is verbal only. I kind of scrunch my nose just a little bit and slowly begin to pack everything away in the very neat and orderly way that I unpacked it. It's actually kind of impressive if you were to look. <laughs> so you see, one of the reasons I, I chose all four of you is because you had, uh, all had excellent memories. So I know there's no need to take any notes. Um, uh, hello, my name is Ignatius Vervium. I am, well, I have requisitioned all four of you for very special 
mission for the uh, Adeptus Administratum. I don't know how much you know about us, but we're the ones who keep the lights on. Not literally, that's the mechanist, but we're the ones that ensure that the engine of the Imperium keeps going, that the soldiers receive their laser weapons and other rations, that the Mechanists, the Adeptus Mechanists, get their uh, in there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I crack my knuckles at the mention of the rations and the weapons on time. Yeah. <laughs> and if you think it was bad now, just imagine if we didn't. Occasionally, we have to do certain things in order to keep everything smooth because there's always profiteers, there's always lazy people, and there's there's well, there's a lot going on. And so I had to requisition for specialists in order to get something done. And here you are, uh, and here I am. And so if the, if this all works well, I think it'll be, well, you'll, you'll honestly, this is the kind of thing that can do you, you very well, because this could lead to a further opportunity for you where you could, you know, Kurt, I know you, you were assigned to, what was it? Was it another uh, uh, uprising or was it off to the fight, the Tyranid fleet? I, I, uh, I was a part of an uprising. Yes. A lot of those. You didn't, that wasn't very fun, was it? No. Yeah, you wouldn't want to do that again, would you? You have served the, the Imperium quite well. A lot of good people die. Yes, but you don't have to be one of you do this, and I can get you duty training. Or well, the, we'll we'll talk about it after you, if you do that. But all of you have special skills, and I think all of you will work well together. But I need you to go to a planet and retrieve three particular people, and to bring them back. Um, and I'll explain why, who these people are and why you need to bring them. But I suppose I should introduce all of you. So yes, this is Kurt uh, Nexlip. He is a, a excellent a member of the Astro Militarum, uh, a dead shot, I'm told, according to your records. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, we have Rabbit here is an excellent analyst, as keen as a power sword and very skilled in a lot of... Um, uh, what was that uh, great... Uh, I, I, what was that great? You you tell them about your, your great success figuring out the enemy's very dastardly plan and, and telling your commander in time to thwart it. Uh, well, I, you know me, I am not one to preen, but yes, it's, it is quite easy to deduce where certain groups will make their next move when you can find previous communications that are just left out in the open it's it's some some folks like to give themselves more credit than they deserve unfortunately so these folks we we were incredibly lucky because these folks were not the kind to switch things up when the going got good as they like to say (laughs) in my crew for some reason but no once once we were able to identify previous movements and compare kind of the the, the order in which they had done things, it became clear that there was a pattern and we were able to figure out where they were going to strike next and in what manner. Exactly. You were the one to see through their deception, through their... Wow. Through, yes. And that's what I need, see through deception. But uh, speaking of that, another person, the 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 hero, is that is that right? Yes. Yeah, I'm good to call you hero. I'm, I'm sorry I'm higher rank, I'm just, it's just convenient for me you but patron. yes and you have some very unusual skills and you've been very um good at dealing with corrupt well there was some very corrupt officials that were withholding rations uh embezzling and in one of the hive worlds or, or, or no what was it it was yeah it was a hive wasn't it there are many places where people seek to hide the truths that they'd rather not have exposed, whether it be in the deepest hives or whether it be within the deepest hives of the self. There is always a way to find such things, though. Yes, there was one in particular, a red eye, a very notorious criminal. What was he uh, guilty of? Was it heresy or just assassin? (laughs) Oh, he was guilty of many things. But the crime that he was charged with was... They call it embezzling? Yes. I, I, I it's a type of stealing. Not, it's a ah. type of stealing, yes. yes and you found was, him, and you were very good at finding people, weren't you? Mm. Yes, good. well, people are less good at hiding things than they think. And then for a very quiet person in the back, the, the energy field 
is a necessity for you two will have to learn to work together. But Lim here is a, a null, a blank. And I don't know if any of you know what that is. Do you? Raise I your hand. If those you... actually existed. They do. They do. They're mostly sent to the black ships, but this one uh, uh, you did not go to the black ships for very normal reasons. Don't worry about it. Anyway, Lim here is going to be your secret weapon in capturing these targets because all three of your targets are psychers. Now, Mr. Harrow here is also a psyker, and so that'll help as well. But nulls, if you're not aware of. Rabbit, are you aware of nulls? Uh, only in terms, but I I, I don't have... No, well, you know what a uh, psyker is, right? I mean, yes. You have, yeah, okay, yeah. Well, nulls are like anti-psychers. They are also known as soulless. It, it's quite... Anyways, p- point Lim at a psyker and she'll be able to deal with him. And Lim, you you can talk, right? The records say here you can talk. I can talk. I haven't had anything to say. Good. What well, I mean, I'm supposed to do. Well, I'm, I'm in the process. I just you'll you'll have to communicate with your team members here because you all be working as a team. And, and you know, if one of you should perish, I hope not. Uh, you, there will be a replacement, but you know, hopefully this will be. I don't want. I mean, technically, no one has to die for this entire mission. I want you to capture people, not. If they get, if you have to defend yourself, fine. But so Lim here will be your secret weapon in capturing these three psychers. Now they're not heretics, at least not in the way that they have to go to the Inquisition. They are criminals, but there's a difference between a criminal and a heretic. Anyway, so why are you here? There, there was a a, a psyker, Silas, Silas Indius. He died, so you don't have to worry about him. But he died with a secret, and I really. We The administrator really needs this secret. We really need this. And he entrusted this secret to three of his minions. And all of his minions were psychers. And so, just to, to recap, Silas was a psyker, his minions were psychers. Now, they did something. I'm not an expert on this, but the secret was embedded in the minds of the three psychers, but only a part of each one. And they can only unlock this secret when all three of them are together. So you need all three of them alive in order to get the secret. So now how that works, I'm not sure, but we need all three of them here alive. So that is your mission. Now with... Lynn is slowly, slowly raising her hand. Yes. Psychers don't like me. I know. I know. That's why... Most people don't like me. Well, for the record, I do like you. I admire your tenacity and, uh, um, and, your, and your calmness. But that's why I need you here, because it's, it's something they won't like, and they'll, the, they'll be able to shut down all of their nonsense. Um, so the, so to the, 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 the problem is that all three of them... The good, there's good news and bad news. The good news is we know where, what planet they're on, and we also know what all three minions, what their current identity is. We have, I have their biometrics on this data sheet with their current aliases. And I don't think they'll be able to change them very easy, easily, at least on the world that they're on. The world that they're on is called Castum 2. Uh, and it's actually fairly in advance for a world. It's a night world. Not as in always night, but as like Imperial Knights. So, and in order to move around on this planet, you need biometric data and a good identity. They've had problems in the past anyways so you'll know what they look like you'll know their names you'll have the biometric data the problem is um, Castum 2 is currently fighting the civil war there are two noble houses there let's see here house paxo and house vandegard and now that neither one is the planetary governor the planetary governor is is controls the capital city and they're neutral and they have a starport that's open They've uh, both houses have agreed to sort of a limited civil war, a very civilized war, if you will. They're not using their titans, they're not using their knights, they're using older equipment and just baseline troops. It's a very populated world, so they have the manpower and equipment to spare, and they're fighting uh, for some sort of advantage in being named the next planetary governor. The current governor is very old, and so both these noble houses want to take that control of the planet. And from what I understand, it's not even, well, anyway. And so the three targets are somewhere on this planet that's currently mostly taken up with a big civil war. 
So you'll be investigating and tracking down these people in, in a war zone. That's why, of course, you need Mr. Kurt here and, uh, as, as security. So that's the... I have some... So yes, here are their names. It is Gideon Durid, Nova Charok, Choruk, and Short Gunfills. So... Can you just drop those in the chat somewhere? I, <laughs> I, I am definitely doing that, yeah. Gideon, Nova, and Shorit. Those are your three targets. Now, this is... Uh, you'll notice that this planet, Kasim 2, is not this planet. So you'll have to get a ship to go there. Now, now here's... I had to call in a lot of favors, but I got you on a ship. Now, it is the... The Humble Pilgrim, which is run by a Captain Helma Reichs. And now I, I was also told that my judgment of you, all of you are, are a little not so dogmatic that you would be unable to work with people who are working on the wrong side of the law. Because this ship is, indis- is, is fairly indiscreet about its cargo and passenger list. So I've already booked for your passage. It should be paid for. You should be fine. They're going to cast them too. You'll be going to cast them too. And you'll be dropped off at the capital city, which is just called, you know, a prime castum. And let's see here. Oh, no, sorry. Sorry, I misread. It's a damnadun. It's, it's a hive city, actually. Small one, only 13 million people. And let's see here. But that is the overall mission. Go to this planet, find these three people. Take them back to the capital, a damnadon, and the ship will stay there. It will be there for a while, and they'll be able to take you back to Castum too. So, now, are there any questions? Yes, Lim. What is a civil war? Actually, this is not like a regular war. Civil war is fought between two armies technically on the same side. So, both House Pax and House Spandegar tithe. They're current. They're actually, it's one of the few planets in this entire sector that's current on their ties, which is why they're given such latitude. So they're both loyal to the Imperium. They just hate each other. And so far, the response of all the powers that be have been decided, okay, let them, let them fight it out. Just keep it civil. No nuclear, no nuclear weapons, no atomics, no Titans, no orbital strikes, just tanks and LAS weapons and, and, and project, you know, slug weapons and, that kind of thing. And oh, it's like when two level gangs fight on the same level, but they both agree not to do anything that could damage the pipes. Right. That, that's actually, yes. Excellent. Yes. Oh, I knew yeah. I chose. Yeah. Yeah. You did well. That is, that is correct. Um, yes. Oh. Uh, Kurt, you look like you had a question or you... no, I'm actually, so we want, you want them intact. Is what yes. Yes. Well, they have to be alive in order for them to unlock this secret, is what I've been okay. told. What if they're already dead or they die, but, but it's not our fault? Are we still in trouble? Uh, no, it's tragic if they are dead. Um, I don't... Yes, that is, that is a possibility. If it's not your fault, if they're already dead by the time you get there, uh, be sure to verify. Make sure... Don't assume they're dead unless you actually have their corpse. The data slide I give you, uh, I'm giving you... He actually puts it on the table and sort of slides it across, sort of in the middle of the table. Uh, any of you uh, verify their biometric data through that data slate. So you, you you can take a tissue sample and run it through that data slate and it'll confirm if it's one of them or not. So don't, don't if they fall off a ri- you know into a river or into a cliff, you have to go down there and get the body. Because otherwise, they're, they're psychers. They, they can trick people. So make sure you get their body. Lim, yes. What is a river? It's a it's like a pipe, but it's only it's on the surface and it's like rock. Like imagine like a, a gulch with water running through it. A, a ditch, a very big ditch with lots of water. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Excellent question. Excellent question. My arm goes yeah. straight up, not like not like shooting very quickly, just like mm-hmm. very purposefully straight up in the air. Rabbit. Um, so to clarify, you wish for me to be in the field. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the thing is, 
as long as you don't side with House Paxo or House Vandergaard, um, neither side is allowed to just kill you. Now, they may deny you certain areas. Of course, you can sneak through. It, it, I'm not Again, I don't know all the local customs, but as long as you don't ally with one side, you should be allowed to sort of travel the planet freely. You know, I, I will give you some, some letters to help with that. So you're not going to be fighting, per se, but you will be in a war zone. Mm. So. Okay. Yeah. Is that your first? Have you not been in the field before? I don't typically go in the field. No. Uh, no. It's a it's a it's a it's a great experience. It'll broaden your horizon. Well, we all had to go through training, so mm -hmm. at least that won't go to waste. Yeah. Excellent. Any any other questions? Harrow, you've been you've been quiet. The names of the pieces, the ways that civilizations fit together, may call themselves what they will, but people are always the same. I have no questions. Okay, excellent. Excellent. Wrong. <laughs> yes, and, and Kurt, your main job is obviously keeping the other three alive while they look for the people. And okay. Do that. So I have all the faith in your abilities. Well, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. But yes, if you do this for, for the Administratum, you'll be doing the Imperium a great service. And you will advance your own careers quite considerably. Or, or we can get you, you know, something, whatever you are. Yeah, we'll, we'll work something out. I, I don't. I want to make sure you are justly compensated for your noble work in in, in uh, protecting mankind. Um, excellent. Well, I have to go to a meeting. I have many meetings. If you ask the guards for directions to the starport, you can walk there. It's it's not too far, and the ship is waiting for you, or a shuttle is waiting for it to take you to the ship because it's an it's an orbit. It's, it's, but the shuttle will, yeah. Anyways, uh, great. If there's no other questions, I, I'll be going. Good luck. And with that, Ignatius leaves. Let's get rambling, I guess. Yeah. So the four of you. So, yeah, when you two leave the... So, yeah, the Harrow and Lim. We have to establish something. Yay. Yay. Uh, let's see here. It is because you have a very special ability. Let's see here. Mm. What page was that on? Blank is on 103. 103. All right. Blank. All right. <laughs> You're mute. All right. You make disadvantages. Test. Thank you for letting me play this character. Ron. Yeah. So <laughs> psychic blanks are, let me just read this. You, you are a psychic blank. One of the extremely rare soulless psychic nulls like you carry the pariah gene, which denies you a psychic connection to the warp that that link. You have no presence within the immaterium rendering you anathema, anathema to nearby psychers and demons. You curtail access to the immaterium in your immediate area. Ordinary humans find your presence disturbing and may even suffer headaches or nausea from prolonged exposure to you. So you win automatically win to post tests to resist a psychic power. You cannot be detected through uh, psychic powers. You are immune to demonic possession. You never gain, uh, you're immune to demonic pos possession. You never gain corruption points. You make fellowship tests with disadvantage, i.e. all non, yeah, not like humans. Tests made to manifest a psychic power are made with disadvantage. Yeah, you are an individual. Let's see here. Yeah. So, yeah, let's let's role play this. Lim and the Harrow, who's leaving their little limb. So, I imagine Kurt gets up first as a military man. He's got his assignment. He needs to get going. A rabbit, you're also military, so you're just like... And then, yeah, Lim, are you also just getting up at the same time, or are you going to wait for the others? I actually am going to probably go last. So Lim did grow up on the bottom, bottom, bottom most level of a hive city at the very, very, very bottom, which means that certain concepts are have eluded her because she has never seen things like land or sky or open air before. Mm -hmm. So everything is very novel. And she was raised by a series of gangs that took possession of her as they realized that she was both useful and upsetting. So she is somewhat ignorant, but has learned, has over time learned very important things. One, to stay away from other people and to keep like a decent distance in order for them not to throw rocks at her. So she is waiting for everyone else to go first, understanding to keep that the distance in place. Okay. 
All right, so the hero, are you also just getting up with the others and not really? Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll go All right. along. So the three, of you, the three of you get into the hallway first, and then Lim joins you in the hallway, and no longer protected by the energy field. So, yeah, there's just, like, we have the rules on page 103. It doesn't say it causes you any pain or anything. It's just, mm. me- game mechanics-wise, it only matters when you're actually, like, interacting with her or trying to use psychic powers on her or using psychic powers near her. So, yeah, how does, how, what do you notice the hero when she steps into the hallways and you, and you realize what she is? She is very quiet. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Have you encountered a psychic blank before? No. Yeah. Since I am a sanctioned psyker and they, you know, did stuff to me as part of training me up from being a weird feral psychic that they found in a hole in a space city somewhere, I know of them conceptually, (laughs) but not not directly. And so I'm just... Actually, I'm going to... I'll roll myself something real quick. That's okay. what my discipline is doing right now. Yeah, no, we're good. Not okay. not great, but we're good. All right. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just I'm just fascinated by the quiet one. Okay. So Kurt and Rabbit, you're not psychers, but yeah, Liv are, is following you. Yeah. Sorry. Are, are are you two gonna be okay like this? I know this is A little strange. It is a part of my designated purpose. The patron has given me a group and a direction. I'm always fine. It's everyone else that isn't. All right. (laughs) Rabbit, you, you okay? Yes. A small, mild discomfort, but... Fine, otherwise. I'm very excited. I have never been on a team before. This does not surprise me. Um, okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll make this work. All right. How does it feel to be the default mom to the worst <laughs> ever? The oh. ultimate bad news bears. Oh. <laughs> All right, so the... Uh, Four of you head down the elevator. And yeah, actually, so yeah, Lynn, this is going to be like probably the first time you've seen Sky because they do, these are, this is a city with like a skyline, like it's just, you know, gray building after gray building, but there's this big gray thing above that with these rolling fog smoke things. Yeah. Uh, Clouds? Yeah, I guess. You don't, yeah. Um, Smoke. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Lynn does have a little bit of reaction, not a bad one, but just, it's very bright. And that she doesn't, so, like, a normal person knows, like, how to shield their eyes, but her response is to just put both of her hands over her face and try to peek through her fingers to block no, out the no. enormity of the light. Yeah, it's like an overcast day. It is. <laughs> it's still, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay, yeah. She grew up in the Undercity. Like, yeah. her baseline is basically slightly brighter than candlelight. This All is right. very bright. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay, we're going to have to get you some, uh, some... Oh god, what are they called? I have I have them. I forget what they're actually called. Uh, some photo visors. God, I love the names in this world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not radio, it's the box caster. Yeah. It's not a it's a machine gun, it's an auto gun. So you get the directions from the guard, you know, go this way, go that way. It's it's about a 30 minute walk. And the four of you start walking. There are other mm-hmm. people, and uh, in you know, you could just basically Imagine these big pillar, like, brutalist buildings, but, like, there's walkways between them. Mm -hmm. But below, it just goes down into darkness. And you know below, there's just this massive infrastructure where it is a proper hive to keep all these data vaults, these basically just server farm after server farm after server farm running. This is just the data archive of this entire galactic sector, or this uh, sector of uh, the galaxy. So... And now we can all make the first skill check of the campaign. So this is going to be a an awareness check. And this will be challenging, which means no modifiers. Gotcha. 36 under 40. Okay. Ooh, 33 under 35. Ooh. Uh, 
34 under 47. Okay. I ask a painfully dumb question. Mm -hmm. Are we rolling? Is it D100? Yes. yes. Under our under our number? Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's under the total number. So. Yeah. So if uh, you have so a. St so what's your stealth or awareness? Sorry. 41. So, yeah, if you want, you want a 41 or lower. Okay. And I got an 87 because, my dudes, it is really fucking bright. That makes sense. <laughs> uh, also, a 1 through 5 is always a success, and a 96 through 100 is always a failure. So, and so those of you... dice go away to the place of shame. So okay. all of you, those of you who succeed, realize that you are being followed. There are a group of, it looks like about half a dozen people that are like one of those of you make it can like see someone literally pointing at you from like a building over and they sort of start fast walking to a catwalk that would get like closer to your position. So basically the way this, this city is laid out is like, imagine like just grids of boxes, you know, the data farms with like catwalks between them over like a misty, like, you know, like endless ravine below that leads into heat pumps and shit like that. So they can't just walk directly across. You have to take these catwalks and you know, they, they, it breaks up occasionally and there's like catwalks that go and la ladders and stairs that go up and down levels. But yeah, you can tell that they, there's, you know, a group trying not to like just outright run because there's occasionally like security guards walking around, you know, or, you know, security patrols and they're trying to be discreet and but they're at a distance and they're they're definitely trying to get to you um, so kurt you made it yes okay two six oh, shit. yeah all right from this distance can i make anything out about the folks are they wearing anything that like any sort of insignias that i could identify uh, they're definitely wearing civilian clothing like rag like lower in like do you have any knowledge skills about, oh, let's see here, let me look at the skill sheet, but I would say, um, like any lore skills. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you can make a, I mean, yeah, I guess it's just lore. Yeah, just make a lore check. That would be a 19 under 64. Okay. Yeah, with that, they are. You actually recognize, so they're dressed like maintenance workers, like, but these are hand-me-downs and they have subtle modifications to them. The, this is a gang. In fact, this is a gang that is very powerful in the city. They are called scroll jackers because they, unlike most gangs deal in like weapons or drugs or people, you know, human trafficking, like the, this gang deals in information because it's a city of information and that's more valuable than, yeah. I mean, the only, uh, the only thing other more valuable than that is food because, Planet suffers massive famines because they don't make any food here. Uh, but other than that, uh, yeah. So, yeah. So they're they're still pretty far. They're, uh, but they are getting closer. So, yeah. Without making it super obvious, I will. Since I'm walking next to Kurt, I will just say, "Scroll Jackers, what do we do?" I saw a spot of them myself. Mm. We keep I moving. Be six or so. Yes. Keep moving. I we'll like the way I corner. haven't noticed, and also I am trailing behind y'all by like five to ten feet. Mm. <laughs> the uh, if we were to do anything more active, it would likely be best if the quiet one was nearer you and I was further away. Indeed. And if you would like, I could get closer to uh, investigate further without being seen. I uh, I have no particular experience working with others, so I'm perfectly willing to defer. Kurt, I assume. You're the you're the martial expert, yes. Why don't you? I know it's going to be uncomfortable, but why don't you stay close to Rabbit? We'll take this corner. I'm going to hide, and I'll come up behind them when they make their move. Get a okay. drop on. Okay. Uh, so you want to like yeah? So you want to get behind them and use the other three as bait, essentially. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that'll give you a plus twenty on your stealth check. Okay. Uh, and I also have specialization in hiding. Okay, yeah. Uh, whatever you add to that. Okay. Can I, can I give you... I I don't know how to pronounce this. I'm going to butcher it. But I have a camellioline cloak. I can also I have pass? a cloak. Okay, line great. Okay. That is also how you say it. Great. I mean, uh, if, I'm, if I'm not near Lim, I can 
cloud people's minds so that they cannot see me. <laughs> Can you do that to six people? Is it like the, everyone in an area? Yeah, it's, or is... it's uh, okay. as far as I know, it's every one, every person and machine near me. Oh um, wow! Yeah. So that would be nineteen out of sixty-nine. Okay. So the... When nice. They will get an awareness check, but they have it at base. Uh, so that's perception. And they fail. So we... All right, so yeah, we don't have to worry about success levels yet. Because and it's then not also, yeah. Yeah. I have the Skulker mm-hmm. talent, which basically when I try to follow a person or group of people using a navigation tracking, I do not have to make stealth texts to remain undetected. Okay. Unless I do something very, very obvious, I am, I am just gone. So basically, the way this works out is you get to a corner of a data vault, which has catwalks, you know, going to the north and to the east. And you start going to the north, but there's a crowd of people. And so you, Kurt, blend in the crowd and you just hang off to the corner with your back turned. Sort of, you're like glancing every once in a while. Yeah. The gang comes up. And starts following the other three PCs on the the catwalk leading to the north. So basically, you three now. So the PCs are north, going north on the catwalk to the next data vault, and the gang is behind them. Now you can. So what do you want to do? Like, do you want to wait until they're on the catwalk where they're vulnerable, or do you want to see what they're going to do before making a move? Like, you are definitely behind them. They don't mm-hmm. see you. They don't. There. You can tell that like you're watching there that they're looking. They mm-hmm. they real they saw that there were four of you and now they only see three of you, right. so they're there. But there's other people here. Like I said, it's a big fucking city, so like yeah. they they aren't like freaking out. And again, there there's security here somewhere, so they can't just like ambush you in public. Uh, yeah, yeah. Quick, quick question, Kurt. Mm-hmm. Do you have a Vox bead? I do have a Vox bead. Okay, fantastic. Then can we yeah. retcon? That we definitely all would have set our Vox beads to oh, the yeah. same channel. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did that okay. on the elevator down. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yep. Okay. Is there okay? Is there going to be a moment where one of their guys lags behind? Mm-hmm. Can I? Yeah, like the catwalk him? is the catwalk is small, like narrow enough that they kind of have to go like two at a time, and there's six uh-huh. of them. And but well, even like one at a time because there's people passing by. Like this is a public yeah. area, so you can definitely like come up behind someone and do something but yeah i'm going to come up behind one of them and stick my my auto gun into the small of his back Mm -hmm. and be like what do you want (laughs) okay is there a skill for persuasion well i guess rapport or coercion yeah i don't know if there's any if rapport is used for intimidation or just persuasion yeah let me let me see because there's also presence yeah presence yeah we're learning the game, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I'm. A, let's see here. Do, 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 where are the skills? Skills, this skills, is why skills. I, I really always prefer having a physical book. PDFs are evil. I want to well, the PDF it has bookmarks too, so I just yeah, but it's not flipping pages. <laughs> it's not flipping pages. I mean, I actually do have the physical book too. I just am using the PDF right now. Let's see here. Presence has a specialization for intimidation, so I'm thinking that is going to be it. Yeah, definitely. Okay. I mean, you can, as far as I know, yeah, yeah, you can. I mean, I'll give you a plus a 20 because you have him at gunpoint. Okay. That is an ought eight. Yeah. Oh, that is a success automatically, isn't it? Uh huh. Um, all right. So he said, you know, be cool. What was your question again? So, what do you want? Stay, stay, coolin', coolin', you know, just, you know, don't get, don't get your heat sinks on. It's, 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 we, we're just looking for you. We saw you coming out of that building, man. You know, the, the, uh, it, it, old Nat, he's always up to something. We just want to know what you're, what, 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 uh, what you're up to. Yeah, just give us, give us a little taste, brother. We can, we can make it worth your while. <laughs> yeah, well, well, well Nat, you know, good old Nat, he's always got something going. Good something cooking. Nat. Yeah. Well, here's what you're going to do. You're going to keep walking. And when you and your boys get to the other side of that cat way, you're going to go the opposite way of us. And you're going to forget you ever saw us. Unless you want to find out what's at the bottom of these towers. Uh, well, the guy in the back is definitely convinced. He's definitely going to do that. But like, you know, what do you get? Uh, um, are you saying that loud enough for the other five to hear you or just just him? 
I will say that loud enough for the other five, like as they're getting across the the, the catwalk. Okay. So make another presence check this time at a negative ten because okay. there's six of them, <laughs> and they didn't like. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> so that is that is a failure. That is Rolf. They don't like Rolf. Oh, that was the one you got. Oh, thanks, random name, name generator. All right, so they stop and turn on the catwalk, and the leader of them, the guy who's at the front, is like, come on, you may get old Rolf there, but we'll get you. So come on, tell your little friends to come back here and, and play play nice. We'll have a cup of tea from made from coolant. Me. Yeah. You don't want to meet my friends. So the three of you head on ahead. And it, you don't have to make a perception check to hear that, like, there's now some altercation starting on the catwalk uh, between the two data vaults. So, uh, yeah. Quiet one. Are you capable of defending yourself or others? Yes. Would you be so kind as to be the shepherd of our, our fair rabbit here? I should probably go and make sure that Kurt is... is Getting everything settled. Oh, yeah. Also, by the way, just as a side, you all have three fate points, uh, which oh. are meta currency in yes. this game, and you can use them to a, let's see here, do all kinds of fun things. You can spin them. You can also burn them. Uh, burning them is permanent. Otherwise, you start the game with three fate points every session. And the, here it is. Fate is on page 220 of the rule book. You can re-roll fail test, gain advantage on a test before roll, add a success level to a test after a roll, the start of a round, choose when to act in that round, ignore an initiative, ignore all effects from critical wounds, including conditions and injuries, or remove one condition. If you remove the prone condition, you regain one wound. A burning fate is basically like, I'm going to die. Now I don't. And here's different ways to do it. So... Yeah, and then there's superiority. Superiority is actually, yeah, if this turns into the combat, you're going to start with one superiority because you literally uh -huh. have one at gunpoint and you ambush them. So good job. So, all right, so you're in a standoff with the, with the gangers. None of them, you can tell they have pistols and knives. None of them have taken them out yet. Uh, your gun is hidden in the guy's back, you know, uh -huh. like, and so, you. but you're all, there's six dudes staring down, five dudes staring down, one very scared looking guy and you. Uh, meanwhile, and so the citizens who are trying to go from one data vault to the other, like starting to back off. It's only a matter of time before security sees this. So hmm. meanwhile, the hero, the hero rushes forward. I am <laughs> stepping far enough away from Lim. Hmm. Till I feel slightly better. Yeah, Lim and Rabbit are, are sort of hanging back on, on the data vault, on the north data vault. And you get to the northern side of the catwalk and, you know, the bridge, whatever you want to call it. And... Yeah, you can see this confrontation. One of the gangers has turned sees you uh, and sort oh, of tells he? you. Because yeah. I'm going to do something. Okay, yeah, go for it. What are you doing? I am going to activate Psychic Static, which, uh, let's see, is on page 169, because I made reference notes for myself. That's good. But it is essentially, seeing this power is where I got the idea for this character, because I'm clouding the minds of those. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> definitely not a pulp character yeah, yeah. no uh, the no, original no. character do not steal trademark mm -hmm. trademark <laughs> uh, okay, yeah so who would who would rip off a pre-existing character in fiction for their character <laughs> that's absurd yeah okay so told my can... name backwards yeah <laughs> uh, Okay, it's a good 40k static. name, I'll tell you that. That's what it is. is the, yeah, that's a great way to I was, do that. I was Actually, going for a real sly Marbo kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're just okay, playing so. 40k as it's intended to be played. Like. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, seriousness yeah. is for suckers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so it is is an easy minor psychic ability, which gives me a plus 40. Mm -hmm. And my psychic mastery is 60. Okay. So unless I critically fail, I cannot fail to do this. Yeah. And what it does is I emanate an imperceptible psychic static, shrouding me from notice and detection until the start of my next turn. A creature or device doesn't perceive you unless it wins an easy plus 40 awareness a test opposing your manifest test. Okay. So uh, those would have to beat your role on that. You. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. And it is a thing that is cast on me. So I take mm -hmm. that to mean that I'm invisible to anyone around. 
Yeah, you would be. Uh, except, yeah. except I assume Lim will just see me the whole time. <laughs> yeah, Lim is not affected by it. Yeah, it's right. extremely funny because you're dodging around, and I can see you, and I'm aware that nobody else can see you. I have learned not to say anything in these instances because it upsets people. Okay, okay so I rolled a a seventy six. Yeah. Uh, so uh, and they that beats uh, their roll because even with the bonus they do not roll high enough. They're, yeah. All right. Let me let me check real quick. I think I understand how I. So they do not warp. see. They yeah. No one is detecting you. Yeah. Kurt, I'm you just... can roll if you want. You 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 get an awareness test. You have to beat a seventy six without <laughs> failing. You do get plus forty to it, but you have to beat a seventy six. So yeah. Okay. But that is a fifty six. So now. So yeah. So yeah, no one detects you. What do you want to do? I'm just going to stroll up to whoever decided to mark themselves as the boss by talking. Yeah. And I'm going to just pull out my pistol Mm -hmm. and wait. (laughs) Okay. All right. So yeah, you get a position to do that. Uh, Meanwhile, Lim and Rabbit, you two can give me awareness checks. Because you're watching from a distance, you you can see. Well, things. I mean, you need an awareness check. <laughs> not not for the harrow, but for uh, other things. Yeah. Ninety six. It doesn't matter what my <laughs> what this my is, skill is. Ninety six. Yeah, yeah. You're just like this is fucking weird. Sixty eight. Okay. Yeah, you're a hive hive worlder. You know how a cop walks. That there's definitely some citizen talking to a cop. You know, a security agent and t- pointing out the catwalk. So you know they don't have much time before the uh, people are going to be... This is going to get real ugly real quickly. Um, so you could try and delay them to keep to keep to keep the, them from interfering. Um, you could... Or you could be doing something else. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. Do we want to have some fun? Because I did get to pick some interesting weapons. Mm-hmm. Um, my character build allowed me to do that, and there is something called. Let me find it. Let me find it. Let me. Find, is this not my character sheet? This is not my character sheet. Why do I have it open? Yes. Oh wait, it is mine. <laughs> Shit, it's the wrong one. I know. Oh god, my life is an eternal hell. I closed my own character sheet trying to close the wrong one. Okay, I have something called like a choke grenade. So that just <laughs> seems like it would be handy at this moment in time. Yeah, it would be pretty. It would definitely hit your compatriot. Or compatriots on on the catwalk, but it definitely you could use it to block off any any security agents from interfering. Uh, yeah, and I'm yeah. thinking like I could either sh- I mean security agents. I'm either going to shoot them or I can stop them. I'm not sure which is really okay. Well, you can get it ready, and if you see them starting to rush in, you know they probably would not start shooting first. They would probably march in on demand to know what's going on. And then when people start pointing weapons at them, they start, you know, using their shock batons. And that's when people start falling and getting knocked off the catwalk. And yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So you get the, you, you start readying the choke grenade, getting it ready. Um, yeah. If Rabbit, do you want to do anything? Or are you just going to wait to see what happens? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to put my hand on my, my last pistol just because I don't know what's going to happen. And, okay. and I better to be safe than sorry. <laughs> Okay, so the harrow's behind the gang leader, and a Kurt, you're you 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 have a gun to the back of Rolf, and the other gangers are looking at you. You get yeah. Uh, what do you want to do? Um. Huh. That's a good question. <laughs> um. I'm going to. I'm going to give them one more warning, and really, like I'll I'll push Rolf up against like the railing, as I I yell, "Y'all need to walk away right okay. now." I'll give you another one more presence check. Uh, sixty-five. So that is not going to pass unless you mm. give me a huge bonus or something. Not a huge bonus. Like, no. I would a plus 10 Ooh, to it. I know yeah. something that might give him a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. But yeah, what do you want? Yeah. If the, they seem if they seem not to be taking the offer... Well, what, simply... what... The immediate thing is that they say, no, you ain't got the stones. Throw them off. You throw them off there. You, we, uh, you ain't got nothing to... 
protect you from us shooting you and then grabbing your your buddies. So yeah. Okay. After he says that, mm-hmm. uh, I'm going to punctuate his sentence with a laser blast to the head. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Plus twenty to hit because you're a point blank. Basically. Uh, there we go. I think it'd be plus twenty. I mean, he's basically helpless. Yeah. He could always crit fail, but other than that. Is 55, no, 53. Yeah. Yes. Success. Uh, All right. Yeah. I don't even go roll damage. Like he's just, <laughs> just, you hit him in the back of the head with a lace pistol. Uh, there's a smoking crater in his head. The gang breaks. It's like, oh God, you know. Um, Sorry, Rolf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like making, making noise <laughs> makes me suddenly appear. Yeah. So. All right. I, yeah. There's just a person there holding a gun, you know. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm going to wait a beat and then say, "Flee." Uh, well, I mean, as soon as you shoot him and Rolf goes over the side, all hell breaks loose because there's four gangers left and they uh, are scared and armed, which is not a great combo. It turns out they they start all right. Turn order, tor- turn order is sort of the first thing. Uh, initiative, so initiative matters. And I've heard tell. I've heard tell. Yeah, and you want to have good initiative, so. Well, now I have the book and the PDF up, just so I can have both. The gang leaders are drifting. Multi-track drifting. All right, their initiative is all seven. Does anybody have an initiative higher than seven? I do. Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, it should be on no, your I character do. sheet. Okay. I have. Eight. Now you can spend a fate point to go whenever you want. Otherwise, Kurt, what is your initiative? Minus six. So. Okay. Yeah, they're twitchy little bastards. So I will. I will spend one. Okay. One fate point. All right. When you want to go first? Yeah. All right. Is anybody else spending the fate point to go first? All right. Nah. All right, Kurt. What do you want to do first? There's four left. Uh, they they're all very fucking surprised. They're like in a row on a catwalk, right? Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna unload <laughs> on them. Uh, all right. All right. What are you armed with? I have my auto pistol with silencer out right now. Okay. Uh, is close and rapid fire. It does not have loud. It has rapid fire three. Okay. Just... Well, let's see here. Where is weapon? Two, 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 two talents. Well, armory. There it is. Oh, two, 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 two. Weapons and armor. Rapid fire rating. But that is. You can declare that you're rapid firing. You either choose to gain the weapon spread trait or you gain advantage on the attack roll and decrease. So spread. Uh, all creatures within immediate range of the target, other than the attacker, must make a challenging dodge roll or suffer half damage. So, um, I will I will gain advantage on the attack roll and increase the weapon's damage by a rapid fire rating. All right, so this is only going to hit one person. You're just sinking it all into one. Yeah, whoever's in the front. Yeah, because otherwise you would actually Hero would also be hit by this too. Yeah, exactly. If, if the spread, because they're all clustered up. So yeah. Yeah, I've been playing Rogue Trader. That's kind of the thing with the okay sister of battle. You with the bolter. Yeah, keep. There's literally a trait for the sister of battle to be like, give your companions a free dodge on your attack when you're attacking them with your auto fire. <laughs> so yeah, so so I just roll my ballistic skill. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, yeah, it's going to be. Let's see here. What you are at close range? I think you you definitely get a bonus. Let me see. Okay. Where the fuck is the bonus? It's always armory, psychic powers, rules. Here we go. Combat, zones, positioning, range. Here it is. Short range. It does not give you. Oh, that's for movement, not for shooting. <laughs> Making attack range. Here it goes. A short range. Oh, come on. Well, it does not I give you a bonus. I'll just give you a plus 10. Okay. Is that it? Roll of cool. Let me see. Okay. Where's my plus skill? Plus 10. 33. Okay, that's a crit. Uh, <laughs> so that is a crit. And your opponent scored more. Okay, let me... So that will definitely injure him, if nothing else. He does get or, a reflex. Are doubles crits in this, too? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, in combat, doubles are crits. Gotcha. All right. What is... And he gets, he misses 
on his reflex, which I guess is just his agility rating. So yeah, he rolled a 49 out of 40. So yeah, you definitely hit. Um, so it's a little more complicated than normal. So damage is, so a critical hit is that you roll on a table and that gives them an injury. You might just outright kill him. So the damage is going to be a fixed number plus your success level. So what is your skill in it? So my skill in it was 35. You give me a plus 10, that makes it 45. Mm -hmm. So I rolled a 33. So that's only a plus one. But the damage number is five, and then I add three to it for rapid fire. So that'd be an eight plus... Plus your success, success, yeah, success level. So that'd be a nine? Yeah. So that is nine damage. Now they have 13 wounds... Um, but you also get a critical, um, and a critical would be, these are unnamed characters. So if they get one critical hit or one, one injury, they're dead. Uh, Name- well, one of them was named Rolf had a name. Yeah. Well, Rolf got Rolf domed was- in the back of the head. Rolf got, got, <laughs> oh no, Rolf got, yeah, got rolled and the no, gang Rolf- leader got, yeah. Rolf, Rolf was smart. He got the fuck out. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, the critical hit tables at the back. Do, 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 do. I like to think that Rolf eventually like catches like a flagpole on the way down and survives. If oh. Lux hit the bricks at escape velocity. <laughs> oh, so where you, this has hit locations and okay, hit locations okay. based on your one. So like you rolled a 33. So that's a three. Like if it was 43, it would still be a three. Cause you know, mm-hmm. it's the last number uh, and that's a th- right arm. So it's our arm critical wound. Roll a. That's how. I think it's a it's you know what do you roll for that because that has a d20 table but it's like or a 15 plus I guess it's a a d10 plus your success level okay yeah this is this is more for because this is a yeah basically a minor uh, a minion he's going to go down anyway Uh, but like what happens to his arm so d10 plus one yeah four Four. Uh, yeah, the, you shoot his hand off. Sliced hand. His hand is sliced open, sending jolts of pain through his arm. He's bleeding. He drops his pistol. So yeah, you just blow a giant hole in his hand. And he goes down. Ah! Screaming. And so... A little railing. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he's on the ground. He's not He's not going to be that dramatic. But he's just... He actually, he's just spinning around holding his hand. It's like... Ah! Uh, spraying blood on the other scroll jackers. So one thing this combat has also is superiority. Superiority is a mechanic where if you have more superiority, you you the other enemy just like runs now, which is higher than their resolve. Their resolve is one. Now normally your superiority starts at zero. Now because you ambushed them, you got one from that. But now you've taken out half of them, so you get enough superiority for that. Taking out their leader and two of the regular minions is definitely one. I think that might even be two a superiority. Either way, it's higher than one. So normally they surrender or flee as soon as you do that, because these are just regular guys. So yeah, the remaining three guys don't want any part of this. And so <laughs> they all run in different directions. Actually, yeah, they... they yeah, because you haven't boxed in. <laughs> they're, they're, <laughs> um... They actually one of them grabs the guy who got his hand shot open and is using him as a shield to hold off. (laughs) Yeah. And then the other two are trying to. Yeah. Actually, give me a reflex check. Roll your agility or lower there, Harrow. Otherwise, they're going to knock you down. Let's see if like a dodge rating or something. 24. My agility is 34. So I make. Yep. So you're fine. So you dodge out of the way and they, they start running. So with the, the gunshots and everything, the security guy, Rabbit and Lim, you can see he's talking into a Vox, his own Vox B. He's clearly telling that there's there's some sort of alteration. He's going to be calling reinforcements soon. So the gang is is is, is running away and that's their turn. So let's see, Harrow, what's your initiative? Six. And Lim, what's your initiative? Eight. Sorry, you would have gone first, but you were. I, I, I said. Uh, oh, sorry. I'm like, I just figured I wasn't close enough. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He spent a fake point. Yeah. All right. Uh, and Rabbit, what's your initiative? Four. Four. Oh. <laughs> All right. It's really cute. I'm just a. I'm just. I'm just a little guy. You're just a little guy. A birthday boy. Just a little birthday boy. Aww. So, um, 
Yeah. Yeah. So, Lim, what do you want to do? Like, after you see this chaos happen and they break, you. So yeah. The they're gangers run. are running. Yeah. Yeah. They're running. That's fine. They can run. We're, we're supposed to be going to a spaceport, right? Mm hmm. You need to get to the shuttle. Yeah. Well, the other two are fine. So, I turn to where I would be like, we should go to the shuttle. <laughs> Whatever that is. Wherever it is, they'll be fine. Or they won't. But we should probably go. I nod slowly. Yes, I'm not inclined to chase after them. <laughs> okay. A hero, what about you? I look over at Kurt. Shall we? <laughs> Let's. Uh, All right. <laughs> what did what did the the gang leader have on him? You want to stop and search him? I want to see if, if he has like extra like auto auto gun magazine yeah 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 uh you pat him down he had let's see here filtration plugs let's see here one in his nose yeah <laughs> one solar a one dollar redo good um, uh -huh. yeah he has a yeah he has an auto gun and a knife as well so um I'll, but that's it yeah i'll take his auto gun and then we'll keep going okay so the 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 problem now is the cops the 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 security people are definitely going to be trying to... Because they saw you two just, mm -hmm. you know, shoot some people. And they are wanting to capture you. So all of you should probably run. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone give me athletics. Triple on. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, no. 99. <laughs> can't roll much worse. No, you can't. 73. Okay. Got dex, man. I can duck. Let's see. 36. What is my athletics? No, that's a failure. I'm okay, so it sounds like all of you failed. All right. So all of you start running and run smack dab into a riot squad of people with, you know, shotguns. Uh, security mm -hmm. agents with shotguns. Uh, and, you know... And they see your weapons out, and they, they yell at you to cease and desist. So you, someone can try to make a pres presence check. Someone, um, do you let them uh, convince you on your way? You could try to bribe them. You could try fighting them. Uh, I mean, there are four of them with shotguns, and they have ar they have armor, so that that's it's not going to be quite as easy as taking uh, down. Gang I members. could I could try a presence check. That could be fun. Okay. <laughs> I. That's so scary to hear. <laughs> what is what is everybody's presence? Are you using regular presence or special presence? No, I don't. I don't have any. I don't have any psychic bullshit for that. Okay. Uh, Mine's thirty. My presence is thirty. Okay. Mine is thirty-five. <laughs> I have more presence than you. Of course, you played, but you're the main. You're the lead. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Yes. Yeah. What is yours? Mine's 37. Oh, no, I have more than you. I have 45. Okay. So, yes. Yeah, I, have, you... I have no presence, but there is a good reason for that. <laughs> yes, you have an excuse. Oh, and I rolled a 10. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Hell three success yeah. levels, because that's a it's one like, versus oh, your four, yeah. So yeah. here, under the light of the Emperor, we are to be waylaid for defending ourselves against common ruffians? Is that what things have come to? Yeah, and 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 it's curious. You're you're not you don't you're not you're not one of the scroll jackers. Okay, yeah, be on your way, citizen. Keep out there. They're after somebody. It's it's they're they're a dangerous gang. Ah, many thanks. Glad to see you here in time to protect the poor common folk. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry, who who are they after? We don't know. They just they uh, normally don't attack this high. They must have been uh, tempted by someone with valuable information. It's what they go after. Uh, people with. Juicy secrets, uh, but uh, clearly, yeah. So we don't know. So all of you do make it to the humble pilgrim. The shuttle is a shuttle there. A, a void born pilot is there, looking just just smoking and sitting on a crate. She she flips open her helmet uh, and sees the four of you and is like looks at you, looks back to the yeah no, you look like four people that would never be matched together. Yeah, so. Yeah, no, come on board. The captain's waiting for you up in the, the ship. So, um, all right. And so you go into space to, to meet the captain. So all of you get on board the shuttle that takes you up to the humble pilgrim, 
which is a ostensibly a normal trading ship. Now, let's see here. The hero and Rabbit, you were both born on ships, so you know a little bit more about them. So this is, uh, yeah, What actually, first, Rabbit, uh, what kind of ship were you born on? Was it like an official, like, military ship, a trading ship, a, a like, every faction in, in the Imperium has their own fleet of ships. The biggest one's obviously the Imperial Navy, the military, but, like, there, there are rogue traders, there's just regular traders, you know, there's explorers, there's pirates, there's all kinds of people. Like, wh- wh- who, what kind of ship were you on? What, 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 yeah, big one, small one? I, I was born on a very large military ship. I was born in the military. I will die in the military. Uh, yeah. That's... This ship fucking sucks. You can see it. It is tiny. This, it, your ship had like, had, had a permanent population of like 50,000. Like it was a battleship. It was it was, you know, massive guns. Clans live on that ship, live and die for generations. You know, your 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 lineage you could trace back. The, your your family was on that ship for a thousand years at a minimum. This is a dinky ass ship for you. This is like and it's also like clearly not it's not a pirate ship because it's being allowed in legitimate Imperium space, but it's like they definitely deal with pirates. This is a shady you could just tell. This is a shady ass ship. This is this is probably only got a crew of like two thousand. A very very small by imper- by by you know navy standards. M- meanwhile, let's see here. The Harrow, you were also born on a ship. Uh, well, a station actually. A station, yeah. What yeah. what kind of station? Absurdly large. There were sections of it that lost contact with each other to the point that they uh, when they reestablished contact, things had gotten weird. Was it like a trading station or a scientific station or a military station? It had uh, originally been a trading station, but it it became somewhat disconnected for a while. Okay. Uh, <laughs> either either because the the system itself was seen to not have as much of value, or I I know not of such things. All okay. I know is that it was chaotic and uh, lonely. So a space station too close. On the progression to becoming a space Hulk. So, yeah. And, yeah, there's actually, like, a really nice bar that was made out of a ship about the size that you're going into. Um, So, mm-hmm. like, again, they, they would just graft on ba- crappy ships and, and weld them on there. And, like, that's part of the station now. That's how you yeah, expand spent, these. Spent yeah. chunks of my early life in rooms bigger than this. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, the Humble Pilgrim is a, is a trading ship. It is a small it still has a navigator because you need a, a astropath. So in order to navigate the warp, i.e. to go faster than light. Yeah. And uh, well, don't worry. The ship is very big. So <laughs> it can stay away from the astropath. So, but yeah, you, the, the captain Helma Reichs greets you. She is a, a older woman wearing a great coat and a very fancy, ridiculous looking hat or, or impressive looking hat to you. And she has a power sword on her side, several implants, cybernetic implants, and uh, several that have dead eyes and fast hands. And she just looks to Kurt. Hello, Nat's a good friend, and I'm happy to do him a a, a bit of service. So you'll be dining with me tonight at the captain's table. So, yeah. So make yourself at home. Uh, Your cord will have... Are, well, do you need any servants or anybody to, to onboard? Or do you want to keep to yourselves? No, I think we should be fine. Okay. Um, yeah, good, good. So, yes, so there's me, and then there is Otto. Otto, he, yeah, she points over there. There is a man with a very tall, gangly man, very pale, unnaturally pale, paler than Lim even, with a big blindfold on his forehead. Uh, Otto's our navigator, and when she points at him, he actually kind of w- smiles and waves, and it's a very odd feeling having a navigator smile at you. He, uh, she, don't worry, I've been told about uh, which one of you is the uh, got the condition. It's, it's this one over here, the quiet one in the back. Okay, yeah. Well, if you could stay away from Otto there, that would be very nice. Otto's a uh, very friendly, but he know. Let me go tell. Go. She points at uh, she points at you, Lim. And while looking at Otto, it's like, all right, so you two stay away from each other, okay? I stay away from everyone. Okay, okay, well, especially him, all right? We need him to get through the warp, okay? Okay, good. Um, 
All right. Well, we'll I'll have a, a, a let's see here. This let's uh, Leona get you your rooms, and then we'll I'll see you at dinner. So she goes off to attend to the rest of the cargo being loaded on there. So yeah, there's there's again there is a crew of about two thousand. It looks like uh, they are getting ready to jump into the warp to head to Castum Two, and Otto is there, and he actually. It seems, well, for those of you with uh, good lord, like, he seems unusually friendly for a navigator. And so if you want to talk to somebody or do something before the dinner, you can. But otherwise, we can just fast forward to that as you throw your meager possessions into a uh, one, uh, two rooms. One for Lim and one for the other three of you. I'm so, uh, and Lim's room is really like a access hatch that leads into a dark space with a... Uh, with a single light and a bathroom that was welded in recently. So. Get under the stairs. Hey, a yeah, bathroom. Hey, yeah. Luxury. Aww. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a mat too. Yeah. That catches the, Tommy. Uh, Lim is both used to being alone and impressed by the enormous room and the amenities included in it. Uh, the <laughs> the area of the hive that literally fell out the bottom into a crevice in the earth that she grew up in didn't have a lot. So uh, running water and amenities is still impressive to her and will mm-hmm. continue to be for the rest of the campaign. And We're they don't even the lock lost you in. child on a field trip. <laughs> uh, and they don't even lock you in. You can just get up and open the door and get out of the room whenever you want. So, yeah, I'll just go to each one. <laughs> well, you can lock it on the inside so that they can't get in. So you got that going for you. Yeah. So the hair, are you doing anything before dinner? Hmm. I suppose... It's common for people to abbreviate names, yes? Yeah, usually. Especially when you okay. have, like, a an article beforehand, <laughs> like, the. Makes I it was, a little difficult. I had merely noticed that the captain of this ship used the same abbreviation for our patron's name as the people who attempted to rob us on the way to the ship. I wasn't sure if this was simply an artifact of both of them being aware of the patron's name or if there was a possible connection. But I don't. I don't know as much about such niceties. I mean, it's a. Uh, I mean, his name is Ignatius. People are going to want to cut that down. At least, you know, people on this level of society. I I make no presumptions. I merely point out suspicion. Well, we can always send him a message before we get too far, just to keep him safe. Uh, I mean, you're still on the planet. You could have actually sent him a Vox message while before you took up in the shuttle uh, to let him know that Squirrel Jackers were tried to get mm-hmm. you. So that that yeah, that, and that, that they did say Nat. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So you send that to him. So at least he's warned about that. Um, all right. So Rabbit, are you doing anything before dinner? Aside from unpacking a couple of my items. I will make a comment uh, specifically to the Harrow as I'm doing so. And I will look and say, sorry, I just coughed. And I will say, I was sure that this ship was going to take us to the actual ship. Scale is difficult to pin down in different places in the universe. The Isn't fact this that be large? I um, that's a terrifying and upsetting thought. Surely mm. it cannot be. Well, the things that the hands of man are capable of is often very funny in ways it shouldn't be. Mm. <laughs> Let's see, all right, and uh, Kurt. Uh... Mm-hmm. Is there anything you want to do before dinner? Uh, I'm just going to do maintenance on my equipment mm-hmm. until dinner time. Yeah. All right. Phrasing? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, so, yeah, after a couple hours, you can feel the ship start to move. The engines rear up as they are maneuvering out of the planet's orbit uh, into deep space uh, to begin uh, preparations to enter the warp. And, uh, yeah, so uh, the Voidborn, you know, you don't, you already know this, that you, you don't just... You probably take like a day to like run a lot of last maintenance checks before you actually go into the warp, especially on a ship this dinky. At least, you know, it's so you're not going to go. Yeah. So you got at least a day before you actually jump into the warp. 
but a servant comes, knocks on both your, on all your doors, or yeah, the two doors, or the door and the hatch, and uh, says, uh, "Dinner is is uh, served. You were the captain has invited you, and it, it, yeah, just 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 follow me." Um, and so all you. right, yeah. so you're taking the captain's quarters, where they're a very large table set up. Uh, it's you, the other officers. Lim, you were you. Otto is not there. The captain says, oh, "Don't worry about Otto. He's meditating to to get ready for." his arduous job but welcome so yeah there there's actually it's a pretty decent spread uh, there's something there that each of you would like to eat uh, what uh, kurt what's a thing you would like to eat like a uh, fresh meat fresh vegetables uh, something processed perhaps i would think like fresh bread yeah a freshly baked bread obviously you have no idea where they got this this the no tower the planet you're on is not known for its food or bakeries they must have one on board so how the fuck they get that but it smells intoxicating uh to you um yeah when was the last time you had fresh bread uh, probably when i was a child <laughs> yeah then limb is there uh, yeah the corpse starch rations is that your favorite or do you have uh uh grox meat you know or the uh you're, they call them rats. You're not sure what a rat is, except the fall, the 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 the, the small furry things that scurry around the dark. Or what? What's something that Lim likes to eat? Uh, I'm actually going to go in a, if it's all right in a slightly different <laughs> direction. Fungi, actually. Mm. Um, it's as big as a man, and you have to be careful because sometimes they do. It is suspected eat men. But mm-hmm. whatever it is, it has a, a quality to it that's not dissimilar to flesh, slightly luminescent, and grows in the deepest areas of the hive, but it is incredibly nutritious. Okay. Slightly hallucinogenic, but only a touch. Like, you just you feel a little loopy, but not like you're going to die. Okay, a little euphoric, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I think right. that hive might have an orc infestation. <laughs> Don't worry about it. So... Yeah, they are carving out. They have a little station where they're carving. There's a guy who's like, hey, how, did you catch the game? Uh, and he's carving out sle- sections of hallucinogenic fungi, little steaks. And let's see here, a rabbit. What, what's a food you like to eat? Cheese, but like very potent cheese. Like the stinkier, the better. Like like you give her, you give rabbit a piece of like mild cheddar mm-hmm. and she doesn't really see the point because if you're going to like have cheese, like have cheese, right? All right. Well, they have it under little dishes, but the little dishes has a little a little thing where you can open it up and and and, and ooh yes yes delicious the stinkiest and aged of cheeses yes. yeah and and the harrow. I'm actually also leaning in a fungal direction. There's a particular kind of uh, essentially like nested fungus dumpling based on a particular kind that grew in between certain levels in the station back home. The inside being this sort of stewed preparation with the uh, the tougher outside being what it is stuffed inside of, giving it a little bit of a crunch. It's quite okay. nice, actually. Yeah. You don't know where they got, where where the where they found it, but they, they have the, it, you swear it's the exact same strain. Maybe it just grows in a lot of stations and forgotten ships. Maybe on this very ship itself. But it smells delicious. Uh, and so, of course, there's some grox meat, you know, st- st- a jerky and some other delectables and various beverages. It's what's it called? Amsec is the popular mm. liquor. Yeah. Lots of bottles of that. Uh, Captain Helm is very friendly and open and, you know, doesn't ask anything about you. Just tells you there's a little pre-dinner show even of some knife throwing and acrobatics from some of the talented crew members and yeah all of you what is like the human skill or the sense motive skill is there one Um, i think it's probably just presence i were to guess or rapport probably i think that's rapport. yeah we'll just do rapport skills here we go rapport directly yeah I'll, I'll, i'll use rapport all right, so you can make a report check if you want. Nope. Okay. Nah. I can Let's try. Oh, there it is. Yeah, 64. <laughs> nope, mine is I, also a failure. I have <laughs> no riz. I got no riz. You got no I, riz? <laughs> I am eating my, my trippy mushrooms. With my hands, because I do not know. I have never been given the luxury of eating utensils before. 
Okay. A rabbit. In the corner away from everyone else. Okay. So no one made it, it sounds like. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. I got, so you... I got a 93 over 20, mm-hmm. so no. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Badly. Even if we were using, like, awareness, which I'm much better at, it would still mm-hmm. be no. Yeah, exactly. Um, so you're all very surprised, like late in the evening, like how you're enjoying yourselves. You're you're actually kind of relaxing, or I mean, as as relaxed as you want to be, obviously. But like uh, they they are clearly you know at ease here and are trying to be hospitable. Uh, when Helma's like, say, there's a. So I wanted to let you know there's a slight um, pit stop we're going to be making before we hit to cast them too, and. Um, I wanted to know if you were in the business of... You have business on Castum 2. I could help you if you can help me with something. Okay. We're going to be stopping at an asteroid. A big rock where there's a shipwreck on it. But it's a Xenos ship. And the a certain tech priest... Uh, wants some of that, just some scrap of that ship for analysis. If Nat sends you, Nat believes in you. Nat, uh, I, I, Nat, no, Nat's not going to send novices or fools uh, in there. If you can accompany my crew, provide a little bit of extra security, uh, and also if you probably have some keen eyes, if you find anything else in that wreckage that might be worth something, I could do a very big favor to you. I know. Um, well, I mean, if you want coin, I could provide that. But I imagine you probably want a friend down there. I doubt any of you have been to cast him to before. No, sure. I can make an introduction for you. To a very valuable friend. Friend with a lot of influence and a lot of information. No pressure, but it, it, it would be worth your while, I think. Well... Rabbit, Harrow, how do we... Well, if we don't have a say in whether or not we're stopping anyway. Mm. Yeah, we're ma- I need I need to get that scrap. Yeah. Mm. Connections Lim, could be valuable, any... and it is usually best not to uh, perturb one's driver, as it were. Lim, you have any qualms about this? Oh, um... Do what you're told, Lim. Don't go off... On your own limb. Don't do anything outside of what you were told, Lim. Don't bother other people. I don't. I'll I'll go where I mean I'll go where you go, but I I don't think that we're supposed to do other things. Well, don't worry. Nat's not going to know about this. I'm not going to say anything. Are you going to say anything? Are they? Is anyone going to ask? <laughs> Probably not. I mean, it'll, the my crew's going to stay on the ship. Well, I mean, you know. Not during the mission, but not not during the. But you know, we're not going to talk. We're not going to. They 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 know not to ask questions or to even you know. They have bad memories. They probably won't even remember you once you leave. Hmm. Well, this better be your your contact. Better be well worth it for well, hopping aboard another ship. Oh no, it's a, well, it's 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 a ship that wrecked into an asteroid or was abandoned. I'm not quite sure. And we're just basically cutting out the the hull for scrap. But, you know, if you want to poke inside, there's undoubtedly valuable things in there. I mean, what? it's a Xeno ship. What kind of Xeno ship? Well, you know a lot about Xenos? <laughs> I've got my primer. <laughs> <laughs> What what does the primer say about the Xenos? Does it list this, even what the species are? Oh, yeah. You've okay. got some stuff in here about the orcs. Oh, it's Eldari. Not orcs. No one would pay for orc scrap. There's even a little bit about the Tau in here. Oh, you know about the Tau. I mean, what I've read, I haven't met them personally. Well, it's a Tau ship. What does your primer have to say about their ships? Let's see here. Um, <laughs> you keep that on you with you at all times. It's if I can't produce this at a moment's notice, I get a flogging. All right, they they some habits die hard. I imagine. Yeah. 
Tau have hollow bones, poor eyesight, frightened by fire, water, thunder. I. Well, there's no Tau left. I guarantee that. They're it's descended a... from bovine herbivores, says here. <laughs> I wonder how they taste. Well, there's probably not even any re- re- remains left. It's it's a ship that it's a wreck we've known about for a while. It's just you know someone says oh, I want the hull for you know as much of it as you can fit in your ship, and I'll pay top you know. Oh, here we go. Pay a high price for it. I'm like, well, of course. Can't be heresy for metal, even if it's alien metal. Vehicle recognition, tau patterns. Ah. Well, I don't like scammer, devilfish, hammerhead. Well, it's a, it's not a armored. V- it's not something you would encounter on a battlefield. It's a space. It's a, it's a void ship. Well, you, you, you research that manual and let me know. But we'll be there in a few days, and you might want to take some time. We'll get some void suits for you for to practice. It is a zero G asteroid because you know it's not on a planet. I don't know how uh, how familiar you all are with uh, zero G maneuver, zero G maneuvering, but uh, part of the guard, not the navy. Well, no time like the present to learn. You've got three days before you will be landing there, so plenty of time to to practice a bit, and we'll, we'll even we even have a training center for you. Uh, so hmm. yeah, so it's agreed. Good. They'll be, the crew will be very happy. We're having some heavy hitters here. And no one else. Yeah, it'll go great. Great. So dinner concludes. And uh, yeah, you all have three days. Uh, you can train with your void suits and learn how they work. And let's see here. If you can give me athletics tests, you can see how well you handle the, the crew teaching you zero G maneuvers and the <laughs> principles of this. <laughs> oh, that's upsetting. 43 over 37. Uh, I'll give you a plus 10 bonus. Yeah, they, you have three days. This is all you're going to be doing if you want that bonus. Yes, uh, that, okay. that's fine. I mean, what what else do I have to do? Study? I have an eidetic memory. I don't need to study anything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, 38 under 41 without any bonuses. Okay. I did get 47 over 32. Okay. Uh, so some of you are doing well. Some of you... Not. What about you, the hero? I whiff hard. Okay. So those of you who succeed, you'll have you'll be able to make all athletics tests without penalty. Those of you who fail will do it at disadvantage when you're doing, you know, things like jumping or running or things like that. You can spend a fate point to negate that for a scene or, yeah. If... Would, yeah. Yeah. would I be able to spend some time assisting them Oh, yeah. Do you have... Let's see here. There was a skill for leadership. Uh, I think that was presence, too. You can give me a presence check. Sure. Leadership. That is 23 under 37. Okay. So, under 37. So, that's a success level one. You can help one of your comrades. I'll help Lim out. Okay. I actually make a suggestion. Mm Mm-hmm. I do not like that they said that the crew would stay behind on the ship. I think I should stay behind on the ship because I can guarantee the ship won't leave without you all on it. No, do they, no, she she misspoke. She meant that the crew won't be like leaving the ship later on to tell about what you've done. Like they'll be helping. The, they're the ones cutting up the the hull. The idea of me staying behind, and if anything goes wrong, everybody's fucked. Well, I mean, out of character, you can't, you can care, but like, if, the, if anything happens in the scene, you won't, you'll be, you'll be. Yeah, you would, back. you would basically be out of that part of the adventure. For yeah, out of character, they're not going to try and leave you behind. Like, okay, because I'm yeah, like, yeah. I, I, I was concerned. In that case, yeah, yeah. yes, you can, you can try to help. I, I have really high dexterity. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the dice are just jerks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're 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 from a world of gravity. That's one thing you're not used to is this zero G bullshit. Has anyone ever seen somebody who has no soul just projectile vomit? They have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There we go. So yeah, three days pass, and and of course you go through the warp while you're you're in the warp while you're doing this. So yeah, yeah. Everyone, give me. Let's see here. Let's just do a straight up. Is it discipline for the resisting warp yeah. bullshit? Yeah. Discipline. Okay. All right. Yeah. Everyone, give me discipline. If you don't have a train, it's just willpower. 
That is 26 under 35. 24 under 35. 98 over 37. Ought one. <laughs> All right. So we had average. Okay. Okay. Really good. God. All right. Coming from the mail shall prove the ship worthy of protecting your legions and bring your light wherever they travel. Show me from the mail. I am reading the litany of warp travel. Yeah. Over and over again. So yeah, you you have terrible nightmares and visions of apocalyptic doom as as unspeakable warp entities plague your dreams. So yeah, you're gonna be exhausted. So okay. yeah, meta game. But can I like <laughs> offer to help with that? Because I feel like that my presence is disturbing, but it would be better than nightmares. Um yeah, so that's the first night. So yeah, do you want to do that for the the remaining two nights, uh, Kurt? Cuddle up with the soulless, or do you want to take the warp nightmares? <laughs> I'll give I'll give one soulless night, and we'll see how I feel after that. <laughs> All right, give me another discipline check. God. That's a 15 under 37. Yeah, you sleep fine. <laughs> yeah, also give me a discipline check, Lim. You're sleeping next to another person. That's deeply That's discomfort. Weird. Yeah. People don't do that. Yeah. That's an 85. Yeah. Uh, it is the most upsetting thing I have ever done in my life at this point. <laughs> I have never had since possibly like gestation had someone be this close to me for this long and mm -hmm. especially and be not miserable about it mm -hmm. okay so yeah you're just miserable about it it's it's not yeah you don't have any warp nightmares the second day are you going to let him sleep for the, the third day yeah life is misery <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Lim, you'll have you'll be exhausted because yeah, you have a tough time getting to sleep. So yeah, you'll have a disadvantage, and when I say disadvantage, on that means instead of like rolling twice and taking the worst of the two results, you flip your tens and your ones on a percenter roll if it if it would be worse. So yeah, if you rolled like a nineteen, you'd have to flip it to a ninety-one. And the uh, so I'll let you choose one attribute that will be at disadvantage for this next scene. It could be a mental one or a physical one. So just let me know when you figure it out. But yeah, it either slows you down, or, you know, your head is foggy, or your your muscles are aching from being cramped up, or something. And all skills associated with it will be at disadvantage. But I'll let you choose. Do you mean, by, do you mean like my like which characteristic or yeah, which characteristic? Yeah. I'm going to say wisdom. Okay. So so the way the way I'm thinking is slow to know information, slow to respond, slow to be able to answer questions. So anything Wait, do you mean like, willpower? Or will? WS is weapon skill. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's not Yeah, let's go with, with willpower. Okay. Uh, willpower is not doing great. So I mean, I can't be harmed by anything in the void. Yeah. But essentially any attempt to be like any any time you're trying to get my attention, trying to talk to me, trying to give me instructions, you're probably going to have to say it two or three times because um, the lights are on, but, like, we ate a lot of those stoner mushrooms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and sleeping next to a person is just... Ugh. I did uh, not sleep the entire time. Yeah. I uh, laid next to a person with their mouth air. You, you eventually, like, lose consciousness, but it's not, like, a lot. It's You never get that deep sleep that you need. It's always, yeah. So the ship pops out of the warp. You're in the outer solar system of the Castum system. Castum 2 is the second planet from the sun, but you're in an asteroid in the outer system. It's a very large asteroid. It's a couple hundred square miles in size. The captain takes you to the bridge where she shows you on the cogitator, the, 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 the screen. There is a massive shipwreck, and it doesn't look like an Imperial ship. None of you have probably seen a Tau ship before, let alone a ruined one, and... Yeah, it, it it's there. And she says, all right, suit up. Uh, we'll... Now, your main job is uh, security. The crew here, they'll do the hard work of cutting open the hull, loading it onto the, giving it to the servitors. Servitors will take it into the hull. You know, we have a cargo vehicle to help with this. Um, it'll take a couple hours. Uh, if you want to go into the, the, the wreckage, it's, so we're going to be in the outer, outside the wreckage proper, just cutting it into the hull. 
Uh, but there's, as you can see, there's numerous holes into this this ship's hull. And if you, your void suits have lights, you have Vox systems. If you want to go in and look for wreckage, this, this place is, it's not a pristine wreck. Other people have been here before. But, you know, it's a big ship, and we don't think anyone's, like, extensively looted it, so... Who knows? Anything you find, we're, you're just here to provide security. Anything you find is yours. I'll give you, I'll, I'll buy it at a high price if you want to sell it. But if you want to keep it, it's yours. But of course, <laughs> it is maybe it is illegal to have Xenos items without a, you know, the permission of a uh, a certain official. It is, it is, can get you in a sticky situation. The cold trade is not for everyone. Um, but uh, that's your, your concern, not mine. Anyway, uh, good luck. So you load in your suits. The ship takes you, um, there's basically, yeah, the shuttle, you all load in the shuttle, shuttle is fully cramped, fully loaded with servitors, other crew member, well, crew members and a, and a cargo vehicle, and you land uh, on the planet. And it's utterly silent aside from the box system. Um, so yeah, you, it's, it's, it's space. You're out there. Probably. How many of you actually been in a void suit in space before? Probably Kurt. Yeah. Yeah, probably once. Yeah. So yeah, especially you, Lim. How are you dealing with these incredibly open spaces of being on the surface of an asteroid uh, and seeing, you know, the space above you and the star in the distance? And yeah, we are we are consciously not looking at mm-hmm. it. It is it is an unpleasant and disturbing sight. But you know, the ground is close by, and if you mm-hmm. think about it, right, the sky is just like a roof. Yeah. There you go. The Harrow, what about you? I mean, I've been in many kinds of darkness before, and I've worn mag boots plenty of times. This is no different. Uh, mag boots don't work on the surface. Uh, you know, I'm just so. saying, I'm, I, I am, I'm used to certain kinds of low and zero gravity. This is different, but mm-hmm. not completely unexpected. All right. So they start get get to cutting, and... Actually, no, as you approach, you can give me awareness checks. 71 over 35. Not cutting it. It's fine. 22. <laughs> Damn. 28 yeah, under 41. Okay. Uh, yeah, I fail. 70 okay. over 47. All right, those of you who make it, you see flashes of light. Well, you, Lim, see flashes of light. Like... Let's see here, like, uh, picture the ship as, like, you know, it's basically a long cylinder, right? Like, you know, a rocket. So, like, you're at the one end, approaching from this end as it's sort of at an angle to you, and and that's where you're going to get. On the other end, you can see some lights as you're coming down in the shuttle. That's what you see, Lynn. With your 22 there, those are laser shots. They weren't shooting at you. They were shooting like perpendicular you see several of them and kurt you realize that there is a firefight going on on the other side of the ship some sort of battle and that's when you have the bright idea like start scanning for vox traffic and Mm -hmm. you you start picking up bursts of intermission transmissions now getting something useful from that would be a tech roll so let's see here rabbit do you have any like tech um uh i've i've got 54? Well, yeah. You can give me a tech roll? Because I assume you pointed out to the others there, Kurt? Yes. Do you have a calm leech there, Rabbit? I don't. <laughs> okay, I will hand you my calm leech. Okay. This allows for you to tap into signals undetected. Oh, great. Uh, right. You can use a calm leech to make a challenging plus zero tech test to attempt to intercept Electronic signals out to three miles. You can intercept messages at a number of minutes long equal to the success level. Okay, that's really handy. And then I rolled a 29 under 54. Oh, great. So you get a lot of fucking information. There's two sources of Vox traffic. One is a clearly a space pirates because they say that they're pirates <laughs> like then we're they say they're with the jerry man's crew the most notorious pirates in the system and then the other ones reply you don't know who you're dealing with we are the eyes of blood the chaos gods favor us and this xeno ship shall be ours 
for the Chaos Gods! So you realize that these two got here and are fighting over this this wreckage, and they haven't realized that you're here yet, probably because they're so focused on the firefight and the shuttle is very small at a distance. And But once you start cutting into the ship, you're going to be generating a lot of light and a lot of heat, and they are probably going to notice you, and they're probably not going to assume... That, yeah, that, that's probably going to attract a lot of unwanted attention, so... Yeah. Uh, uh, can I yeah. tell, like, just from like listening in, is there a way to kind of like gather information on how many people are involved in this? Like a rough mm-hmm. estimate. Yeah. You get a sense that there are about four squads per side, three or four. You've, you, there's four units per individual side. You don't know exactly how many on there, but you estimate a squad anywhere from three to six people. So, like, you know, 12 to 24 people per side. And they each have a commander. You recognize the commanders by their voice. They're the ones doing most of the, you know, trying to scare the other group into leaving. And they are you know, small units tactics, using a lot of laser weapons and stuff like that. They're mostly not willing to charge each other. They're mostly just taking pot shots from the cover of this a very heavily armored ship, which is basically immune to laser fire. So... They apparently have a lot of laser shots, a lot of ammo, so they they're just shooting at each other behind cover and not willing to take any risks. So it's it's yeah, but yeah, so twelve to twenty four per side. Now with the crew, you probably there's you four plus about I'd say twelve spacers with you in the shuttle, and obviously there's two thousand on the ship, but you know you don't know where yeah how they get here. You don't know where their ships are, if they have reinforcements waiting. So this could escalate quite a bit. Yeah. Can the rest of us, like, can only Rabbit hear what's on the radio? Or can the rest uh, of I'll us let know? Rabbit, like, filter through the traffic so you can all listen in as well and, like, pick up different things. So you can, she's acting as, like, a router to sort of pick up all the network traffic so you can all kind of make checks to figure out what's going on or, like, make plans based on this information. So yeah, you, you yeah you could you could listen into, yeah. So what do you want to do with that information, Lynn, or hearing? Uh, we do not. I don't care about criminality. I don't care about stealing. I really don't care that much about Xenos, but I care a lot about followers of the Chaos Gods. Mm-hmm. And this will not stand. Yeah, I will go. You can come with me, or I will go alone. That is the one thing. Okay. So let's see here. It's, 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 a, it's a little bit odd because the sort of formerly passive, almost sweet, shy Null is suddenly much more animated with a little bit of the light of the cultist in her eyes. Oh. Because plucked from obscurity and nowhere by the hand of the emperor, she was drawn out of the underhive and her loyalty is absolute. Actually, um, just as a side, intuition is the skill to use to pick up as the scent mode of human skill. Uh, sorry. No. Uh, but you can use it on groups, too. So you can all give me an intuition check. Uh, especially after Lim has mentioned that, you know, Lim wants to kill all the chaos cultists. I'm too distracted trying to uh, filter any new incoming information because mm-hmm. uh, I only got a 44 over 35. So, okay, not uh, quite. 61 over 35 sounds normal to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm just watching the distant laser fire. Okay. Uh, so none of you figure out anything. Mm-mm. No, we're all dumb as rocks. <laughs> Look, I'm busy. I'm focused. Okay. Like you can't ask me to intuit anything when I okay. there's data to to go through. Okay. Kind of rude, actually. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, so what's Lim wants to go take out the Chaos Cultist? Who who wants to join her? Do you want to try and recruit the your the crew members of the Humble Pilgrim to help you, or is this like all team uh, team? You said there was like twelve. To twelve 20. to twenty four is Rabbit's guess based on the Vox traffic. Total um, or on like each side? Each side. So yeah, there's more than you could take in a fair fight. Now, obviously, an ambush would give you a force multiplier, you know, but yeah. We're not, I understand, wanting to wipe the scum off the face of the galaxy, but we're not exactly in the uh, the strongest position. We need to get some backup if we want to really take it to these people. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, if all Lim cares about is the Chaos God, only one group worships them. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's fair. Let's see. Let's see what we can work out here. Let's come up with a game plan. Okay. Well, if you have a relevant skill that would help you come up with a game plan, I don't know if there's like a logic. Logic? Yeah. Don't do sure. this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, or academics? Or no, lore, if there was one. Oh, let's see. Did you, did you, I'm just seeing if there's like a lore for battle or something like that. You know, lore, lore tactics. Do... Yeah. Well, they're all the same rating for me anyway. So Okay, yeah. Well, there you go. I do have Faithful of the Imperial Cult, which might be helpful. Is that a talent? Destroying heretics. Yes. Okay. Well, yeah, when you actually get into battle, that'll be something yeah, to keep in mind. But until then. Yeah, this is just like figuring out how to do it, not, yeah, doing it. Yeah. So what'd you get there? 91. Nope. You could spend a fate point to flip that to a 19. Oh, you know what? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Okay. There are a couple of ways you realize you could even the odds. Uh, one is to open up negotiations with the Jerryman's crew and coordinate with them to do a pincher attack. Also, you could recruit uh, people from the, hum- the 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 people you're here in the shuttle with. Uh, you mm-hmm. could tell them like, "Hey, we need to go attack those people and flank them." Or three, you could bluff them, say you're with the Imperial Navy and scare them away. Four, you could see if there's a reactor in the ship and blow up that part of the ship. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, there those are four things that immediately come to mind. Yeah. I th- I think working with these pirates might be our best bet. Yeah, because with, with rabbits the amount of Yeah. You can contact them too, Rabbit. So yeah. Oh, great. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, because with a com leech in your your tech role, yeah, you you definitely have access to that. Okay. So who wants I think Harrow's actually the best talker in the group. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Uh, I'll say Rabbit, by the way, you also find out why they actually talk about why they're called the Jerry Man screw. It's like, you know why we're called the Jerry Man Jerry Man? He loves to take the Jerry cans and pour Promethium on his foes and burn them alive. So yeah. It's what we do. To people we don't like. Like you. So yeah. That's Sounds like Sounds a very valid. painful way to go. Yeah. Uh, whew. Anyways, the chaos cultists aren't scared by that, weirdly enough. At least they don't sound scared. Uh, you can make another intuition check. Yeah, I actually will. Yeah, that's it. That seems fun. I will Let's too. See how they're feeling. Mm-hmm. 56. I got an I don't know. Nine. So, listening to the chaos, the eyes of blood and listening to their chatter, you realize these were miners. Like space miners, like people mining an asteroid somewhere in this system, that rebelled because of horrible working conditions, and they turned to the chaos gods out of desperation. And because uh, in the grim dark future, you cannot form a union. You cannot form a union. Yeah, that's heresy. And they talk about their dear departed leader. Like apparently, there were they were being led by some prophet who was a psyker who sacrificed herself to so they could get on the ship and escape the the mining station before it blew up. So these guys, they do mention the Chaos Gods. They mention something about Zinch and, and, and corn and blood for the Blood Throne. But they're 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 very novice acolyte cultists. They're not they're not they're not like hardened yet. They still sound kind of scared and like they don't know what they're doing. They're lost, purposeless cultists. So yeah, they so yeah, their their morale is they're not as fanatical as the what you think most Chaos cultists are. They're they're yeah. They made some bad decisions and they don't know what they're doing. So meanwhile, so you land on the, on the, the ship. Have you, by the way, you haven't even told the uh, people you're in the shuttle with about this because they were so focused on their job and they're just like crew, you know, the captain doesn't tell them it's a problem. They don't know. They don't give a shit. Just do your job and keep going on. So they didn't even look out the portholes to notice the late shots. So yeah. So you land the shuttle a couple hundred meters away from the, wreck um the vo- the 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 landing thing opens up uh, the cargo vehicle comes out the servitors start coming out and the crew starts trudging towards it with their welding equipment so unless you want to tell them or warn them about the battle on the other side of the ship we're hold on there is chaos here there are some combatants at the other end of the ship we need you to stay hunkered down until we handle the situation. 
We don't want you getting injured or damaging the ship. Oh. Oh, thanks, boss. Uh, yeah, but I didn't think anybody would be fighting over this scrap heap. Well, good luck. All right. <laughs> oh, man, Captain made a good choice hiring security. Yeah, good job, Captain. All right. So okay. let's let's get organized. Do you want to talk to have you talked to pirate companions yet? No. The the ones that we're going to try and team up against the others with the Jerry man. The Jerry men. Yeah, the Jerry men. Yeah, because they use the Jerry cans. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All okay. right. Oh, 13. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So what's your opening? <laughs> Jerryman, if you tire of this stalemate, then perhaps I have an offer for you. Who's this? A mere traveler, but we may help you with scouring the surface of this from these pretenders of chaos. And in exchange, we may all go our separate ways at the end. You don't take it. We can still loot the ship, can't we? Whatever anyone finds becomes their loot. And I see no reason to have any problem with that. I, I prefer to scour the chaos and worry for the rest another time. We've, we've got to take some for ourselves, too. Don't forget. Okay. All right. We'll. What's, what's your plan? Kurt? We can circle around behind them. <laughs> I can provide long range. Fire, just sort of a pincer, your basic pincer. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's, you don't have to make a roll for that. You kind of like, oh, we're on the northeast side. We're on the northwest mm-hmm. side of the ship. And we, we're, oh, we're on the southwest side. Oh, and they're on the southeast side. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. So, so basically, you kind of figure out, look at the terrain, you realize there's a really good rock to be behind that would be behind the Chaos Cultist position. Or you don't want to go just charging at them from open ground, right? So there's a big rock that would be a good place to shoot them from long range with your, you know, long range laser weapon. The other place would be to go along either on the top of the ship or through the middle of the ship and coming at them from a different angle than they'd be expecting. On top of the ship would be a lot faster and a lot safer. You can see there's nothing on top of the mm-hmm. ship. But once once they know you're up there, you're kind of like on open ground, right? And there's not many holes in the top of the ship, it looks like, so you can't just jump down into the ship itself. There's actually, ship's still remarkably intact. I mean, there's big holes in it, but not like, it It mostly fell intact. Now, if you go through the middle ship, who the fuck knows? But obviously, you have a lot of cover. So the, the big rock would be a stealth or an athletics check to get to, or the, to jump on top of the ship is free. And you just walk up there, it's, you know, just walk on top of the ship. And... If you go inside the ship, well, you don't know what's in there. So, yeah. yeah. I will take the rock. I don't know what everybody else wants to, how they want to play it. I think that actually having different people in different positions would be a good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going up and over. Okay. Well, I don't, I don't feel like leaving Lim alone is smart for, I don't know, a few reasons, but. Do you have a, a, a last carbine? No, I have a LAS pistol, but I do also have a frag grenade. I don't know how frag grenades work in space, but... Very well, actually, if you're a good thrower, you, you they, could, they just keep going. They never stop <laughs> until they explode, so... Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, how, long is the, uh, how long is the fuse on your grenade? I would, I, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, typically four or five seconds, but I don't know what the actual... You know, this it's in the 40,000 years in the future... The fuses are slightly better. I will say you can program it or you can set the timer from the standard is four seconds, but you can actually open up. You, there's actually a little device, a little thing to give it a longer or shorter fuse. So mean, you can have up to anywhere from zero from, well, one second to 15 seconds. If you would like. Yeah. I could walk up and place it among them and then leave. Yeah. I like would. that idea. That's a good idea. That's okay. a great idea. All right. All right. So all of this is happening at the same time. Kurt, you do you want to belly crawl to the thing or do you want to run to the good rock? Uh, I will. I will sneak. OK, I'll give you plus 20 because they don't they're not looking that direction. OK. That is 63 under 64. Damn. Very good. So 
a limb, you jump on top of the ship. Me, you know, it's like moon gravity. It's very low, and that's pretty good. So you're on there. So rabbit, you're with her on top of the ship with your lace pistol. You handed your grenade off to the harrow. The harrow, go ahead and give me that psychic test. <laughs> <laughs> Which is again sixty plus pistol. forty because psychic static yeah. is easy as shit. Yep. Um, if somebody would like my last carbine, they can take it. Rabbit will take it just because it's a longer range weapon. So yeah. That is eighty five. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You. They aren't aware of you. So yeah. The you see basically two groups of people in void suits. You can tell they have different markings on them. The pirates. There's a bunch of jerry cans next to the pirate section. Of this firefight, weirdly enough, they 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 really believe in the branding of of their captain. But the the chaos cultists have really crap, just the worst chaos signs you've ever seen. Like in terms of like execution, like there's seven stars on the eight star image. <laughs> like they they can't count right. They 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 can't draw a skull with shit. They they don't. They just oh god, these guys are just they're they're not very good at being chaos cultists. And so like I said, there's four squads. They're all scattered about sort of equal distance from each other. Um, you can, you know, one squad is closest to you. That would be the easiest to sneak up onto. Uh, and just plant the grenade in the middle with 15 seconds and then bounce away. Mm. You just want to do that. But yeah. Uh, yes, that okay. is what I will do. I, I'm imagining the signal is going to be when the grenade goes off. Um, yeah, you will have to give me athletic sex because even with 15 seconds, that's you got to move because. <laughs> mm. The, the 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 grenade go boom and you don't want to be anywhere affected by it because you don't get flung into space from the uh yeah i guess there's not much for shockwave because there's no air but still there i is just tra- realized i could do something even more silly and continue to increase my warp charge mm-hmm. i also have a spectral hands which is essentially telekinesis so i could <laughs> just walk to a safe distance and then float the grenade over and just place it there yeah Actually, you don't no, have to make an is... athletic stuff yeah you just have to make the what do you have to make yeah that one is slightly that one is slightly less easy it's routine so it'd okay. be 60 plus 20 uh-huh <laughs> so i gotta roll under an 80 mm-hmm. if you succeed then you won't have to make the athletics because you're and you'll be in cover because like yeah and that is a 30 all right uh, so the grenade goes off one squad <laughs> is just shredded by the grenade no rules necessary. They're in void suits. They're, they're crappy void suits. They just You just see four bodies just... And they just start flying off. Two of them into space. Two of them hit sides of the ship, impaling themselves on jagged bits of the metal wreckage of the ship. And you all get an ambush action. So, Kurt, do you want to give me an awareness check to pick out the leader from all these void suits? Sure. 17 out of 40. Yep. Yeah, there's one with, he's got extra spiky bits on his void suit. Uh-huh. They always so, do. They always do. They love the spiky bits. All right. My long last. Ranged. And ought eight. Okay. At uh, 45. Oh, shit. That's uh, extra levels of success. Uh, yeah, he's a, he, I'll just say he's also already been wounded. It's an ambush action. Yeah, he's gone. Uh, so yeah. technically, I was going to say, my thing yeah. has penetrating one, which means it defeats one armor level of armor. I would mm. think that would just punch a hole in his void suit. And he, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, even if he wasn't killed outright, the punctured void suit would also uh, be a real big problem for him. So that will definitely, that's going to, yeah. So you have two superiority from that. What is their superiority? Do, 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 do. Because they might... I don't know what their chaos... Like, you know, I said the gang has a superiority of one. But they have void people. Yeah, no, there's just one. Okay. So, Lim, you're on top of the ship. You look down. You see one squad get deleted by the grenade. You can see the cult leader get shot in the back of the head. There's two in... And that, that, the, that squad is definitely panicking. There's two squads that haven't been touched yet during this ambush action. Uh, what do you want to do? The two squads that haven't been touched yet. Am I medium distance? Yeah. I actually have a... You have the high ground. I have the high ground, and I have a stub pistol Mm -hmm. and a las pistol. Actually, range won't matter for the stub pistol because there's no air. It'll just... The bullet will just keep going. Um, So, yeah. Physics! Yeah. Yeah. You have a plus 10 on the stub pistol. Last piece one might have better armor penetrating. Yeah. Actually, if you give me an awareness check. Uh, um, okay. 
A 35 under awareness. 35 under 41. Okay, one of the one of the squads has a big barrel of promethium with them, which is rocket fuel essentially. Like an explodey barrel is near. Obviously, part of the supplies they were using to cut open the ship for their own access. Oh, so, yeah, interesting. I mean, I should probably use. Does it matter if I use the las pistol the, or like it'll explode with either? The las pistol it would be better to detonate the promethium. Yeah, so uh, yeah. I grab the 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 las pistol and just gently squeeze off one shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'd be a standard range, shooting. I think. Yeah, yeah, range. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's no pew sounds because you know you're in space. But in my heart, there are pew sounds. <laughs> I can't remember the name of the game, but there is a video game that was set like fighting. It was like a competitive FPS game where you where you're all astronauts shooting at each other in orbit, and it's like every time you load up, it's like virtual sounds enabled. So like, even though you're in space, you still heard gunshots and rockets and shit like that. It that's was, cute. Uh, I yeah, like yeah that. that's, I like that as a move. That's good. Yeah. Anyways, uh, did you make your attack? Yeah. <laughs> What'd you roll? Did, did you hit? Ninety-eight. Okay. Well, you that last definitely hit the asteroid. So, a rabbit, you see what Lim was shooting at? Yeah, I I have a feeling my luck is probably going to be about the same, but you know what? I have this carbine, so let's go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, make an attack roll. <laughs> no, okay. 59 over 30. Okay. Wait, which, what, what did you roll, Kara? 98. Okay, yeah, you couldn't flip that. Yeah, there's way. nothing to be done. Yeah, yeah. I think, no, you can spend a, pay, a fate point to re-roll. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So if you want to do that, you can. Otherwise, we will move on to actual... Actually, no. They, they You kill the leader in one squad in one round and flank them. So that's going to give you two superiority at least. So that would be enough to cause them to flee. Um, so, yeah. Because these are not like high-resolve enemies. They're not very determined. So the Chaos Cultists fall back, uh, start running across somewhere in the distance, you know, uh, away from the shipwreckage. How does Lynn feel about that? She's going to chase them if somebody doesn't <laughs> convince her not to. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, let's, let's, uh, Robert, you're right next to her. Uh, you see Lim jumping down. Da- what, yeah, what is Lim? What, how does Lim immediately react to seeing the Chaos Cultist flee, running, bouncing away? Just, um, if she, she jumps down to run after him, she's, she's literally like, like a dog. Just after them. <laughs> All right, so she floats down, you know, ju- takes a giant leap. Uh, give me another range check to, to see as you fire your laser pistol as you're, you're, you're jumping down from the ship. A 58. Uh, does that hit? Is that over that... 30? No. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just wildly fi- firing the laser pistol. This is infuriating. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. Uh, so, Rabbit, do you want to do anything? Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna let her just go off by herself. So I, I, I don't assume that I'm close enough to just grab her. So you can I, try. I, yeah, she, she was right. In, she was near you. Like you, you could still try. Okay. Um, yeah. Athletics. Athletics. Let's do it. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's an eleven under thirty-seven. All right. So Lim, you you jump off the ship and then. You feel something at the nape of your neck, and you look back and see rabbits holding on to the back of your void suit, or the strap on the back of your void suit. Uh, 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 you're just... Whoa. Weren't you the one saying that we aren't supposed to run off and do other things, Lim? I understand that you have a thing going on, but we don't need to go on this wild goose chase right now. Have you ever seen... Say- if cats exist in this universe, you know how, like, when your cat has, like, the gremlin zoomies, and they're just, no, 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 and you pick them up, and they're just, their eyes are just pupil? Like, just, <laughs> that is what her eyes look like, just gremlin zoomies. And also, we are on a little bit of a staggered, so she hasn't exactly heard what you've said. And also, even in the void, even through the void suit, being this close and grabbing onto her is not a pleasant experience. No, no, absolutely not. But I, I, I wasn't just going to to let you jump. So I'm I'm dealing with it as best I can. It's it's uncomfortable to say the least. But 
I think I think with an eleven, I'm I'm pretty confident. Well, I mean, I guess I guess I could roll like a willpower if you wanted no, to see no, if no, I hold no, on. No, no. But, just, okay, just, it's just like ambiance. Okay, <laughs> sure. Yeah. So, so there there's a moment there's a moment of like gremlin eyes, and then just after a moment, the mission. <laughs> the mission. <laughs> yeah. So and when I'm yeah. when I'm confident that Lim is not going to jump again, I I will set her down. <laughs> yeah, you can pull her back up top of the roof again. Zero G. It's not hard. Or you could float down. Like, this part of the ship, by the way, is like, was hit by something big, so there is a hole in this part of the roof. That's why you're able to shoot down into the into the wreckage of the ship. So you can jump down into the wreckage of the ship. Or you can just head back to where your crew is and, you know, tell the Jerry Magic, good job! We'll stay on our side, you stay on your side. And yeah so sounds like a plan to me yeah so yeah the jerry man they 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 want to get some scrap too they're looking for xenos artifacts to sell and neither no one's chase chase that chases after the chaos cultists and you yeah so the you you tell the crew the humble pilgrim to start cutting they start Mm -hmm. get get to work uh does anybody want to go in the ship to look for loot or do you want to just await your time and get back on the nice human made ship <laughs> instead of the weird wrecked alien ship? Um, I mean the hero has no opinion about this, so mm-hmm. we'll do whatever the team decides. I, I wanna take a peek inside, just like look around while they're cutting away at stuff, but I don't know how much exploring I'm actually gonna do. Okay. So yeah, there there are numerous. It looks like the ship was evacuated. There's numerous smaller entrances that are all open. There's like a cargo bay in the middle that was opened up, and again, there are, the ship was hit by enemy fire. Clearly, mm-hmm. based on the impact craters, uh, packed holes. And uh, but you on the ship that on the side near you, there's a human size humanish sized door near where your crew is cutting up the hull, and you can just take a and just peek in. Mm-hmm. Um, so you do that. Uh, you look around. Give me awareness. And lore, if you want to look at that. And so, if anyone wants to join Kurt, you can. Yeah, uh, this would be something that I would be incredibly interested in, just because, you know, cataloging information is the thing nerd. that I do. 28 under 40 for awareness. Okay. And then. You see something. 79 on lore. So now. Okay, so you look down the hallway, you notice there's some machines or parts of the components of the ship that fell off and landed on something and it's caked in dust and but you notice you kind of like hmm, let me you you go over to it and brush brush it off and you see a skeletal arm and you realize that uh, there was an alien that you know something you look above you could see it like a little niche where this component of the ship was supposed to be in and it clearly like broke fell killed the alien and nobody noticed they got buried in the dust, and it's been here all this time. You could, you realize, uh, so you look, you you sort of look under this, some of this broken machinery that's on top of this alien skeleton, and you can see there's something under the machinery, like mm-hmm. something metallic, something long and curved, or has curved parts to it. Uh, but you failed your lore check, so you don't know what it is. But, like, you, you need to lift or get this machine off in order to get access to it. So, um, so uh, yeah, rabbit. So, sorry. Uh, yeah. Cause I actually got a 55 under 64 for my lore. Oh, well then you know exactly what this is. Of course um, I do. That skeleton is not a towel. It's a crute, which are an alien species that were allied with the, ta- that are allied with the towel and work as soldiers for them. They're like, more bird-like, but they're long, strong, and they eat other species. That thing under that is almost certainly a, a crute rifle, which is a weapon that they use. Yeah, a, it is a got blades at the end, and like, yeah, there's probably some ammo with it. So, yeah, I'm 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 going to explain this to Kurt when I look over and I see this really confused, blank look on his face. And just rather matter of factly, almost as like not, I, I'm not trying to be condescending. That's just kind of how it comes off. Like, yeah, how do you uh-huh. not know this? Like, <laughs> you know about the towel, but you don't know about the crew. Like, who are you? What I don't understand. Activate anyway, info dump. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Uh, 
<laughs> my trap card. But I will I will point out the weapon and just say that's it's a, it's a crude rifle there. It's probably more your speed than than mine. I mean, we'll we'll find out. You want to give me a hand moving this thing? <sighs> Fine. All right. Both you up, get... guardsmen. Um so who has the higher athletics? Probably you, Kurt. I'm going to assume. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, what is it? What is it? I have a 41. Well, yeah, only barely. Mine's 37. Okay. Uh, so you can assist, uh, but it'll be using Kurt's roll. It'll be plus 10 uh, to Kurt's roll, I think. <laughs> How you doing? You, yeah, you, you good there, buddy? You okay? Yeah, you okay? You, you having a good time? <laughs> Kurt explodes. Need... I got a 99. <laughs> Stop using those dice! <laughs> Did you switch your diet? Like, do you want to re? Do you have a fate point to respawn? I have one fate point you... more of this. Are we going to be playing, Ross? This is this is the end of the session. Like, yeah, this is. Yeah. I, will, I will go ahead and use it then. Yeah, smoke them if you got them. All right. Oh yeah, go ahead and roll. Re-roll. Uh, twenty nine. All right. Okay. So instead of being shot by the crude rifle, <laughs> after dropping the machine on it, and in another timeline, you drop <laughs> the machine. Hitting the cur- the weapon right on its trigger, pulling it up, and it, it you know blows a hole in your chest. Yeah, but in this timeline, save scumming. Yeah, they really are. But in this timeline, you manage to lift the the, the component up, uh, and you have a crude rifle. Uh, yeah, with a bandolier of ammo. Where well, you think it's ammo, but yeah, it's a big Xenos weapon. So yeah, and after a couple hours of work, they have a cargo full of. They have a full load of a Tau ship metal to sell to the tech priests, and you get back on board the ship, and she, let's see, Captain Reichs is very happy, and she says, yes, Kali Wool is, let's see, do, 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 is an information broker, um, and she is in the capital city of Damnedon, and she, I will vox her as soon as we get in orbit, to let her know that you, she can expect you, and she has a, she has eyes and ears everywhere. She runs the orphanarium, and all of the children of the orphan are her good little helpers. And there's not something that happens that she doesn't know about. So whatever you're trying to do, she'll be the person to talk to. So yeah, and that's where we end. As you you head on to to your 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 planet of Castum Two to find your three targets as part of the Indius Mandate. So, yeah, you did it. Nobody yeah. died. Nobody died. Well, yeah. several yeah. people died. Yeah. Well. So we'll save for the next beginning of the next session events and endeavors. Uh, but look at that section in the rule book. Basically, every player character gets at a random event every session, and they can do a group endeavor and individual endeavor, which is like what you do in off time. Um, hmm. So, huh. yeah, you can train, you can speculate you know try and gig economy job or something i don't know there's a lot of cool oh, things. actually yeah before before we wrap up and before mm-hmm. we like leave this asteroid i want to i want to do something just to sure. see what happens uh, which is you gain you gain warp right you gain warp charge when you mm-hmm. use psychic stuff and you kind of got to get rid of that now to do this during combat you have to roll for it but if we're not in a stressful situation, then I can just dump my warp charge before we leave this place. Roll to see what weird shit is going to haunt this area where I did that. All right, yeah. Because it's, it's probably best to purge that, not yeah. on the ship. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to go outside and do my business, you know. <laughs> um, can you not call it that? <laughs> <laughs> not, no. It's in the past now. It's happened. Okay. It's on the recording. Right. It yep. is forever. It's canonical now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Stand make a roll wizard on the fingers in the space. <laughs> yeah. Make mm-hmm. a roll on the psychic phenomena table. Mm-hmm. I rolled a seventy-five, which means memory worm. Everyone in the area finds it difficult to recall minor things such as people's names or the time. Lingering the area. Okay. No. That's yeah. That's, that's right. if I did that more than once. So we're good. <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah now anyone who visits that ship is gonna get weirdly forgetful yeah <laughs> yeah no wonder people maybe that th- this isn't even the first time this happened that's why people keep hitting the same fucking wreckage we haven't been here before let's go hit this ship yeah the Tau ship yeah everyone loves the Tau wreckage yeah so you get on board so yeah there'll be invent- events and endeavors so before we end the session uh, any any thoughts on the system and campaign so far v 
Yeah, I'm I'm having a lot of fun. I uh I was a little nervous, especially when like reading over the combat stuff, because mm-hmm. it's not similar to other systems that I've played, aside from like the uh the D one hundreds. That's that's pretty much where the similarities end and start. But no, it's it's it, it's been okay. I think I think it'll be a while before I ever would try and run something like this because there's a lot to keep track of. But you know, I generally I I'm I'm having a blast. I think it's really fun, and I like that everybody's bringing something different to the table. Even oh, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so it's 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 really really nice because like we mm-hmm. all have like there are similar backgrounds and stuff, but it's it's cool because everybody's everybody's different and and our mm-hmm. skill sets are very very unique and i like that yeah i did structure this session to be kind of a tutorial thing for like well, there's some random gang members attacking you gangers yeah like that's pretty easy to deal with and like yeah that would get through a lot of rules uh, and then like this well, this one was like oh there's two got two groups of assholes that hate each other go yo jimbo it a bit you know yeah very classic stuff. Uh, thad any thoughts i i do appreciate the fact that enemies can be cowed away like the, that, the idea. Yeah, the superiority it, stuff is really interesting. Yeah. yeah, that's very good because that's mm-hmm. a thing that always drives me nuts in video games when every single mook is ride or die forever to <laughs> gouge your eyes out with their thumbs. Well, they like, have those juicy experience points. You got to get those. Yeah. Yeah. But no, I, I really like that mechanic a lot. That's fun to see. Unfortunately, I didn't get to use my other power that I was hoping to use in that fight, but I feel like. Yeah, we'll see later. It'll yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll worry about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Akira? I'm having a good time. I have... The the thing is, is I always... And I feel like everybody thinks they do this, but I'm sure... I feel like I do it the most. Of I build a character thinking, I'm going to build it for these reasons and this purpose. Mm-hmm. And it never works out as planned. <laughs> uh, so in terms of that, that's the eternal frustration of being a little sister and nothing ever working. But besides <laughs> that... I'm having a good time. I'm very excited to see, and I like that we have um, a lot of people with a lot of different abilities. Yeah. Well, I, I think that that's what makes things the most fun is like, y- you want to try and stack like an evenly distributed party with different skills and combat and out of combat and things like that. So that way people are not stepping on each other's toes. Mm-hmm. Um, but everyone has something to do at different points. So I'm excited for that. I, I think it's a good sign when a crew like builds a team that works well together almost yeah. by accident. Well, when you made your when you made your psychic blank character, I was like, well, mm, let me think. But then it's like, oh, wait, you're trying to capture psychers. That makes sense. Why they would need yeah. you? Then like, yeah, give help helped me focus the campaign because like, hmm. I wanted to run it in the system and the setting, and I wanted to do something where it's not chaos cults all the time. There was a chaos cult, but they were just like random bad guys. They weren't like <laughs> it's not, store brand chaos. Yeah, it's it's not like the plot revolves around chaos cults doing bad things, which is like how every fucking forty k story goes. Anyway, Noah, uh, I I cut you as you. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, how's your meal? No, I'm. It's it's been a great time. Just you know, like everybody else, I like how we're all different, but there's enough like similarities and background between certain characters that it works out pretty well. I like mm-hmm. having like V and myself being like kind of two different parts of the Asher Militaro, that kind of deal. And then, yeah, to, to care this whole thing, it is that age old quote about no plan ever surviving contact with the enemy. It's like no character ever survives contact with the actual scenario. Yeah, never. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, like I've, I've been enjoying it. It's, it's reminiscent. It's kind of like a blend between the, the FFG system and then like, Cubicle Sevens, mm. Warhammer Fantasy Fourth Edition mm. role play. It's like there's a little bit of a crossover kind of there, and I thought like when they first announced this, it's supposed to be kind of compatible with the FFG games. So it seems, uh, yeah, like or I, like yeah. at least easy to kind of convert. The stat over. blocks are certainly very very yeah. close. Yeah, is that old? They're using the the Warhammer like tabletop game stat blocks for mm-hmm. stuff like weapon skill ballistic skill that kind of stuff yeah yeah. yeah classic classic yeah no eager to see how this game yeah i'll be looking into more like i'll be introducing more mechanics later on like the influence okay. stuff and like i said we'll do events and endeavors next session we'll look at advancement as well as yeah you meet the uh, nice old lady who runs the orphanarium 
with all the secrets. <laughs> so yeah, that'll be great. And then you can find out about which target you want to go after first. And uh, we'll go from there. But anyways, thank you all so much for playing. And thank you all so much for listening. Uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye. 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 Let me stop recording.